Preface and Act One of Treasure Island, a play in four acts, by Jules Eckert Goodman. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Treasure Island, cast. Jim Hawkins, read by Rachel. Mrs. Hawkins, read by Jennifer Fournier. Dr. Livesey, read by Christine G. Squire Trelawney, read by Todd. Captain Smollett, read by Maria Casper. Hunter, read by David Lawrence. Joyce, read by Elizabeth Travers. Gray, read by Andrew Travers. Captain Billy Bones, read by Beth Thomas. Black Dog, read by Marianne. Pew, read by Ray Casper. Long John Silver, read by Adelda Pinerolis. Captain Flint, the parrot, read by Beth Thomas. Morgan, read by Esther and Simonides. Anderson, read by Aaron Lebowitz. George Mary, read by Lydia. Israel Hands, read by Mark Thornton. Dirk, read by Maggie Travers. O'Brien, read by Maria Casper. Arrow, read by Tricia G. Dick, read by Beth Thomas. Ben Gunn, read by John Burlinson. Ben, read by Mike. Another Man, read by Charlotte Duckett. Narrator, read by Tricia G. The Scenes of the Play. Act One, The Admiral Benbow Inn, Black Hill Cove. Act Two, Scene One, The Key at Bristol. Scene two, the key at Bristol a few days later. Scene three, the Hispaniola at anchor off Treasure Island some weeks later. Act three, scene one, Treasure Island at dawn the following day. Scene two, the stockade an hour later. Scene three, the Hispaniola adrift night of the same day. Act four, scene one, the stockade the following morning. Scene 2, Spyglass Mountain, the North Cache. Scene 3, Ben Gunn's Cave. The story of Treasure Island is so well known that only a brief resume need be indulged in here to freshen everybody's memory, and how can this be done half so well as in the words of the immortal little hero, Jim Hawkins. Quote, Squire Trelawney, Dr. Livesey, and the rest of these gentlemen having asked me to write down the whole particulars about Treasure Island, from the beginning to the end, keeping nothing back but the bearings of the island, and that only because there is still treasure not yet lifted, I take up my pen in the year of grace, 17 blank, and go back to the time when my father kept the Admiral Benbow Inn, and the brown old seaman, with the sabre cut, first took up his lodging under our roof. I remember him as if it were yesterday, as he came plodding to the inn door, his sea-chest following behind him in a hand-barrow, a tall, strong, heavy, nut-brown man, his tarry pigtail falling over the shoulders of his soiled blue coat, his hands ragged and scarred, with black, broken nails, and the sabre cut across one cheek, a dirty, livid white, I remember him looking round the cove and whistling to himself as he did so, and then breaking out in that old sea song that he sang so often afterwards. Fifteen men on the dead man's chest, yo-ho-ho ho, and a bottle of rum. Act One. Scene. Interior of Admiral Benbow Inn. Before the curtain goes up, there is heard singing in loud boisterous voices. When the curtain rises, the captain is seen seated at the head of the table, with five or six men about the table. Stools for table, not chairs. All drinking, and the captain browbeating them. Captain, seated table right, singing with villagers before curtain goes up. Fifteen dead men on a dead man's chest, yo ho ho, and a bottle of rum. Curtain. Cross to head of table, centre, sits. Wait, wait, I say, we'll sing that over and louder, every one of you sing, sing now. 
they sing fifteen dead men on a dead man's chest yo ho ho and a bottle of rum drink and the devil had done for the rest yo ho ho and a bottle of rum hits on table with his tankard that's enough silence i say as a man gets up where are you going i'm going home sir captain thunders at him sit down sit down by thunder you'll do as i say the man fearfully sits down the captain draws his cutlass and places it on the table in front of him not one of you leaves do you hear yes yes it's a foggy evening and i'll have company company hits on the table with the end of his cutlass mrs hawkins mrs hawkins i say mrs hawkins rushes in from the tap room left center yes yes captain why don't you come when you hear me more drinks mrs hawkins oh please please sir what did you hear what i said did you very well sir i'll get it goes out to tap room left center you two there what were you whispering about i saw you i'll have no whisperings you hear well why don't you speak if you please sir who told you to speak hits on the table with end of cutlass mrs hawkins mrs hawkins i'll have the rum 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 do you hear let me go get it for you sir sit down another man getting up it's late and we must go sit down i say the men sit down not a man leaves i'll not be left alone with those faces out there in the fog but there are no faces who asked you to speak by thunder i've seen men run through for less rum 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 mrs hawkins coming in with tankards of drinks right of table coming coming sir the men getting up but indeed we've had enough what's that getting up and we must go home sir what enter dr livesey mrs hawkins pleadingly oh please sir you're driving all my business away driving it away i'm holding it here madam sit down as the men still stand and edge toward the door what you refuse you refuse to sit down and drink with me then by thunder we'll see with a cry the men rush out right center the captain rushes up to go after them and comes face to face with dr livesey who enters hello what's all this silence between decks are you addressing me sir ay that i am pounding on the table with the end of his cutlass silence i said silence or stop that what's that mrs hawkins comes down right terribly afraid oh please sir please captain coming up angrily toward dr livesey now say that again i sent for you to stop it and i mean it the captain holding his cutlass in his hand why you rum punch and weak live and swab you bandy leg lubber i'll show you put down that cutlass what you dr livesey staring captain down put it down or upon my honour you shall hang in next assizes put it down dr points the captain gives way and now you listen to me i warned you against drinking before you had a stroke and much against my will i dragged you head foremost out of the grave and now mr bones that's not my name well it will serve all right and i tell you this one glass of rum won't kill you but if you take one you'll take another and i'll stake my wig if you don't break off short you'll die you understand die and go your own place like the man in the bible well that's my business yes and this is mine i am a magistrate as well as a doctor and if i find the least complaint about you hereafter i'll take means to have you routed out of this now then away with you this is a free inn you heard what i said go captain on stairs 
You'll pay for this. You'll see. He starts upstairs. That's all right. And remember the very name of rum is death for you. Captain goes out. Door upstairs. Huh. Mrs. Hawkins, very afraid. Oh, sir, I'm so glad you came. He's got all the people round here so afraid they'll hardly come to the inn any more. We're all in mortal terror of the man, sir. In spite of my warning that it would kill him, he's been drinking, eh? Mrs. Hawkins sits. Oh, yes, sir. Drinking and singing that horrid song. And blowing his nose so loud, sir. It sounds like the report of a cannon. As Dr. Livesey smiles. You may laugh, but I never knew a man to put such fierceness into the blowing of his nose. And when I asks him for money, sir, why, why, that's when he blows his nose the loudest. I dare swear he owes you for his lodgings. That he does, sir. Oh, I appeal to you as magistrate. He's ruining me, sir, ruining me. Mrs. Hawkins, Squire Trelawney and I have been watching your lodger for some time. He's given Jim a silver penny every month to keep his eye open for a seafaring man with one leg. Ah, I see now. And that's the worst of it. The influence he has over my boy. Jim's a good boy, I'll be bound. That he is, sir. Jim's the best boy in the world. The captain is filling his head with stories. You should have heard the stories as he told about that boat. Indicates picture over mantle. Dr. Livesey looks at picture and reads title. Flint's treasure ship. He's got the boy so worked up with his horrid tales of pirates and sea fights and treasure hunting that the lad is fair bewitched with the idea of going to sea and, oh, sir, rise. He's all I have. I want my money, but I don't want my boy in his company. Puts chair back to table. I think I can promise you both, Mrs. Hawkins. Squire Trelawney is to meet me here tonight. Oh, sir, I hope there isn't going to be any fighting. Can you keep a secret, Mrs. Hawkins? As close as the grave, sir. You can, eh? Come here to the window. As she starts to the window... No, it's so foggy you can't see, but there's a little lugger down at Kitch Hole. I suspect that's the boat our friend is looking for. What? What is it? Smuggler. Oh. That's what your captain is. That's why he's waiting for one special seaman. And that, Mrs. Hawkins, is what the squire and I have been waiting for. I've got men all over the countryside. Now, if we can keep an eye on the captain. Enter Jim from Tap Room. We'll get the whole crew of them. Oh, I say. You say Jim is close to the captain. Hand and glove, more's the pity. Jim. Yes, sir. That horrid man has had enough for today. The doctor wants to talk to you. Exits. Sit down. Jim comes over and sits at the table. Thank you, sir. Jim, since your father died, your mother has had only you to help her. I do my best, sir. I know you do. Quite right, my boy. Jim, your mother tells me the captain hasn't paid for his board and lodging. He hasn't. Not since the first day, sir. He was at that door calling for a glass of rum. This is a handy little cove, says he. Much company. Oh, he asked that, did he? And when he heard as how there was very little, he says, this is the berth for me. So when he comes with his sea chest and throws down three pieces of gold, you can tell me when I've worked through that, says he. Well, he has worked through it, hasn't he? Oh, yes, sir, and much beside. Jim, if your mother is to get what's owing her, you must watch his every move tonight. I shall be there in the village. The least thing that looks suspicious, any strangers that call him, any attempt of the captain to leave, you send me word, by your mother, no matter what happens. Don't you leave him for one moment. Jim, slightly afraid but trying to hide it. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Jim sits right of table. Jim, there's a nasty fog out there. A fog that hides things on the sea. A fog like that is bad for ships on good business, but it's good for ships on bad business. These men are on bad business. 
with sudden change of tone. Hawkins, I am a magistrate. Yes, sir. Hawkins, I appoint you an officer of the crown. Jim, startled, arises. Dr. Livesey? Dr. Livesey salutes him. An officer of the crown, Hawkins. Jim awkwardly returns the salute. Uh, aye, aye, sir. You're the only one who can watch without suspicion. You're not afraid, Hawkins? No, no, sir. I, I'm not afraid. Dr. Livesey's hands on Jim's shoulders. Then we'll unravel this mystery before midnight. Keep your eyes open, remember. Officer of the Crown. Exits Dr. Livesey, right center. Jim salutes. During the last two preceding speeches, there is heard a song as if the singer were approaching. Captain on stairs. Jim, is he gone? Who? That swab of a doctor. Yes. Then go fetch me some rum, Jim. But... Rum. A whole tankin of it. Fetch it to my room. Starts away. But, Captain, the doctor said... The doctor be blowed. I... With sudden change of manner, he now becomes almost whiningly kind. Nay, come here, Jim. I'm not meaning to be hard with you. You've been my friend, the only one I can trust. Confidentially. And if ever I need someone, it's today. There's things brewing today, Jim. Looks fearfully over his shoulder at the window. I can feel it in the air. It's just the fog, Captain. Aye, the fog. It's full of faces, Jim. The fog. Keeps looking around furtively at the window. Every step of the way from the cove I've seen em. Faces, Jim. Like those of Flint's crew up there. They've been all around me there. Suddenly stares at the window. See? See, there at the window. Look. Jim crosses to window center. Why, there's nothing there. Didn't you see a face, a face with an ugly look on it? Jim goes to the door, right center, and looks out. There's not a person on the road. Comes back into the room, center. Faces, faces everywhere in the fog. Turns suddenly. You've kept your eye open for a seafaring man with one leg? Yes, sir, though it's no pay I've had these several weeks. What? I said I'd had no pay and... As Captain takes out his handkerchief to blow his nose... That's all right, sir. You needn't mind. Captain blows his nose. No pay, hey? Well, well... Starts to roar and then changes his mind. Well... There's your pay, lad. Take it. Take it. I'm needing friends today. As Jim takes the money. There's a little lugger down at Kit's hole. Keep your eyes open. Watch the road and... Jim, anyone asks for me? You don't know me. You never heard of me. Understand? Not even the seafaring man with one leg? No, none of them. Bring my rum upstairs now and keep your eyes open. Turns and glances at the window. There, there he is again. See him looking in that window? I tell you there's no one, nothing. Nothing, eh? It's the whole crew of them in the fog there, the whole crew of them, and it's going to be a fight. But we'll beat him yet. Get me that rum, quick. Goes upstairs. Jim goes timidly to the window and looks out. Then he draws back. Finally, he gets up his courage and goes to the door, looks out timidly, then grows bolder, goes outside, looks up and down, and finally comes in and closes the door. He exits to the tap room. For a moment, the stage is empty. Upstairs, the captain can be heard singing his song. Finally, a face is seen peering at the window. Then the face disappears, and soon the door opens and a man enters. A pale, tallowy creature, wanting two fingers of the left hand, and though he wore a cutlass, he did not look much a fighter. He is Black Dog. For a moment, he stands listening to the singing and nodding sardonically. He is making for the entrance upstairs when Jim returns with a tankard of rum. Black Dog wheels quickly at left. Jim, surprised and startled, left center. 
I, I, I didn't hear you come in. Black Dog left at stairs. Hm. Tidy little place. Very tidy. Come here, Sonny. Come nearer here. And what have you there? Goes up to Jim, who tries to draw back. Some rum, sir. Black Dog sniffs it. Hmm. Rum it is. Good, strong rum. Jim, fearing he is to take it. It's for the gentleman upstairs, sir. For the gentleman upstairs. Good, strong rum for the gentleman upstairs. You know what I think? No, sir. I think it is just the sort of stuff that it suit my old mate, Bill. Now, what do you think? I don't know your mate, Bill, and so... Don't you now? That's too bad. What might you call your gentleman upstairs? Captain. Well, my mate Bill might be called Captain. Jim, starting to go. I'm sure he isn't the same. We'll put it for argument. Your captain has a cut on one cheek, and that the right one. Jim starts. Ah, well, I told you. Now, is my mate, Bill, here? Jim, up two steps. I'll go upstairs and let him know. No, you won't. As Jim still starts to go, he thunders at him. Stop, I say, or stop. But, sir, I must tell the captain. Black Dog then fawning again as Jim stops. There, there, lad. I'm meaning you no harm. Why, I have a son of my own as like you as two blocks, and he's all the pride of my art. But the great thing for boys is discipline, Sonny. But you see, I planned this as a great surprise to Bill. Bless his heart. And I couldn't have you spoil it. He takes out his cutlass and tries it. Oh, sir, I hope there's not going to be any trouble. Captain upstairs. Jim! Jim! Where's my rum? Black Dog motions Jim to keep silent. Shh! Shh! Bill and me's old friends. He'll be glad to see me, Bill will. Bless his art. Still upstairs. Jim! Jim! Shh. Not a word, or I'll wring your neck. Grasps Jim by the throat and urges him back of the stairs left. What are you doing, sir? Giving Bill a surprise. A little surprise. The captain comes down the stairs, furious. Jim, where has he gone, Jim, I say? Goes to center head of table. Jim! Black Dog speaks when captain gets above table, steps out with cutlass drawn as captain turns. Hello, Bill. Captain stops short as if stunned. You! You! Come, Bill. You know your old shipmate. Black dog, what do you want? Moves toward him. Just come to see my old shipmate, Billy, and talk over old times. Captain, bitterly. Old times, huh. Moves toward Black Dog. Black Dog circles to right of table. A sight of times we've seen, Bill, us two, since I lost them talons. Holds up mutilated hand. Now, look here. You run me down. Here I am. Well, then, speak up. What is it? That's you, Bill. Always to the point. Significantly to Jim. I'll just have a glass of rum. Here, sir. Makes as if to offer the tankard. Black dog sinister. That's for the gentleman upstairs. I'll have my own. As Jim hurries toward tap room. Don't hurry back. Jim takes hold of the taproom door to close it. Leave that open. None of your keyholes for me, Sonny. Jim goes out at taproom door. Captain, fiercely. Well, out with it. Now we'll talk square like old shipmates. All shipmates, huh? Sure, Bill. We're all here. 
Morgan, and Hans, and Pew, and O'Brien. Silva? I, Silver. He's in command down there on the little lugger. A nice little lugger it must be. We all sailed with Flint, and what we got like gentlemen of fortune belonged to... Flint. I, to Flint. And Flint to Flint's crew. And that's what we've come for. What we're going to get. Go on. Out with it all. There's money about you, Bill Bones. Sits right of table. Money as belongs to us all. And more than money, there's a little chart. Flint's fist. Showing where all Flint's treasure is hid. Them things belong to us all. And by thunder, them things we're going to have. Now you know, Bill. And that's the message they sent by you. Aye. Then you can go back and tell them I'm still captain, and what I say is law. Why, you mess of swabs, you think you can give your orders to me, you? It's more than that we'd be giving you, the little black spot. Oh, you will, huh? You'll tip me off the black spot? Well... Let's see the one of you that dares send him along. Or maybe you've got it, have you? Have you? Raises his cutlass and rushes at Black Dog, who avoids him. Now hand it over. Hand it over. I haven't it. But here it'll be all right. And you'll surrender things as don't belong to you, or you'll swing. I'll swing, then we'll all swing, and you can tell that to Silver, to Pew, to Hans, to O'Brien, to all of them. Bill Bones is still in command. And that's the answer I'm to take back. Yes, that's the answer. And that, that, that. As he speaks, he strikes with his cutlass. Black Dog tries to parry and fight, but he is quickly disarmed and flees, and the captain hurls his cutlass at him as he runs out the door. The captain, very much shaken himself, follows to the door to pick up his cutlass and calls after Black Dog. Tell that too. Tell him whether Bill Bones has lost his arm. As he picks up his cutlass. Tell that to the one who's to bring the black spot and... As he comes back into the room, he suddenly totters and falls upon a stool. Jim, Jim! The captain seems about to swoon. What is it, captain? With rum for black dog. Rum, rum, quick. Jim, rum on table, center. The doctor warned you. Look, Jim, how my fingers fidget. I can't keep em still, not I. If I don't have a drain of rum, I'll have the horrors. I seen some on him already. I seen old Flint in the corner there behind you as plain as print. I seen him. And if I get the horrors, I'm a man that has lived rough. And I'll raise Cain. The doctor himself said one glass wouldn't hurt me. And I have hardly had a drop today. I'll give you a golden guinea for a noggin, Jim. You shouldn't touch the stuff, sir. Handing him the tankard. There. As Captain drinks. Oh, sir, I'd better call someone. I fear it's another stroke. Captain, holding on to Jim. Don't you leave me. Don't leave me, Jim, not now. I need you. Drinks. You're the only one worth anything, and with your help, Jim, I'm gonna beat him yet. I will, Jim, I will. Drinks and seems to recover as he does so. You shouldn't touch that stuff, sir. Eh? The doctor said it was sure death. Oh, what's he know about it? Doctors is all swabs, and that doctor there, why, what do he know about seafaring men? Rise. I've been in places as hot as pitch and mates dropping round with the yellow jack and the blessed land, a heaven like the sea with earthquakes. Drops glass. What do doctors know of lands like that? Ah. Uh, and I lived on rum, I tell you. It's been meat and drink and man and wife to me, and if I don't get me rum, I'm a battered old hulk on the lee shore. My blood'll be on your head, Jim, and on that doctor swab. You will give me one more noggin, won't you? Seems to grow fainter. 
Jim, giving it to him from shelf up center. You're killing yourself. Captain, recovering. Now, listen, Jim, that man just here, he's a bad un, but there's worse put him on, and they're out there on that ship, in the fog, waiting. They're trying to get me, to tip me the black spot. The what? The black spot. That's about the worst disgrace can come to a pirate captain. It means he must step down. That he's gone. Done for. That he's got to do what his men say instead of them doing what he says. Sometimes it means worse than that, too. That's what I'm fearing from that crowd out there. Take a look at the door. Jim looks out of door. No one, sir. Close the door. Come here. Confidentially, as Jim comes up. It's up there in my old sea chest, what they're after. But I'm going to try to get away first. And if I do, I'll promise you, I'll come back for you some day. And we'll go to sea. <laughs> I, as I told you, in a schooner with a piping boatswain and pigtailed singing seamen. To sea, Jim, bound for an unknown island to seek buried treasure. You'd like that? Oh, yes. Well, I'll promise you. But if they tip me the black spot first, you get word to that doctor magistrate. Tell him to pipe all hands, and he'll lay him aboard here at the Benbow Inn. All of Flint's crew, all of them that's left. Jim, frightened. Not Flint the buccaneer. Flint's crew, I was the first mate. Aboard that ship there. Points to print over mantle. Old Flint's first mate. And I'm the only one as knows the place. What place? The place where Flint hid all his money. The chart's up there in my chest. Flint gave it to me in Savannah as he lay dying. But you won't, Peach, lad, lest they get the black spot on me. Will you, Jim? No, no, Captain. Oh, lest you see a seafaring man with one leg. Him above all others. You'll keep your weathery eye open, lad. Gets up, but he is very weak. And if I get away, I'll pay you well. If I don't... You go to that chest and you takes out the money I owes your mother and a little package in oilcloth. Take that to the doctor. He'll tell you what to do. Jim goes to help the captain who totters toward the stairs. Let me help you. No, Bill Bones can stand alone yet. And with your help, Sonny, we'll beat him. You'll see. We'll beat him yet. Jim, upstairs. Mother, mother. What is it? Those men down there at the cove. Yes? They, they are pirates. What? Flint's crew. They've come for the captain up there. Whistle. Hear that? What is it? It's a signal. Whistle. There's the answer. Noise. He's heard it up there. Mrs. Hawkins crosses to left of stairs. Oh, dear. What shall we do? They'll be all about our ears. What shall we do? We must send word to the doctor. Yes, yes, come quick. No, I've got to stay. My orders were to watch. But... Dr. Livesey made me an officer of the Crown, and I must stay. So you must go, Mother. And leave you alone, Jim? No, no, no. The doctor's relying on us, Mother. But the fog's so thick. Just to the village, and be sure to tell the doctor they're not smugglers. They're pirates. Flint's crew, quick. Mrs. Hawkins, kissing him. Oh, Jim, Jim, you close the door. You close it tight. There, there, Mother, quick. There's no time to lose. Remember. Exits left intermediate. He holds the door open and calls softly. Mother, Mother. When he gets no answer, he closes the door and comes back into the room. Then suddenly he gives a start, for there is heard the tapping of a person with a cane. The tapping comes closer and closer, and finally stops outside the door. What's that? There is a slight pause. Jim trembles. There is a knock at the door. With a gulp, Jim stumbles back. A second knock, and Jim masters his fear and approaches timidly the door. He opens it. There stands a man, plainly blind, a great green shade over his eyes and nose. He was hunched as if with age and weakness. He wore a tattered old sea cloak with hood, and that made him appear positively deformed. His voice was an odd sing-song. He is Pew. 
Will any kind friend inform a poor blind man where or in what part of the country he is? You're at the Admiral Benbow Inn, Black Hill Cove. I hear a young voice. Will you lead me in, my kind young friend? Jim takes Pew by hand. There, sir, easy now, gently, and— Oh! He winces with pain as Pew's manner suddenly changes, and he finds his arm gripped tight. You're hurting my arm, sir, not so tight. Pew, hard and menacing. Take me to the captain. Jim, trying to get away. Oh, please, sir, please, sir. Take me, or I'll break your arm. The captain is ill, sir, very ill. Lead me straight to him, and then say, here's a friend for you, Bill. If you don't this instant, I'll... Jim, as Pew has suddenly stopped to urge him, and now stands listening. Please let me go, sir, please. I hear someone on the stairs. Unless Pew's ears trick him, it's a friend, the captain. Is it? And sir? Squeezes Jim's arm. Is it? It is, sir. Then remember what I said, and I'm holding on to your arm. He tightens his grip upon Jim, who winces. The captain comes tottering downstairs under the weight of his sea chest. He seems very feeble. Well, bait him yet. Well, bait him yet, Jim. Pew whispers to Jim and pinches. Say it. Now. Jim winces under Pew's hold. Here, he hears a friend for you, Bill. Captain turns and sees Pew. At sight of him, he lets the chest fall with a crash and totteringly supports himself against it, seeming quite dazed. Pew! Pew to Jim. Lead me to him. As Jim leads him up to the captain. Now, Bill, stay just where you are. Business is business. Hold out your hand. Boy, take his hand by the wrist. Bring it close to mine. Jim does as directed, and Pew passes a paper into the hands of the captain, who seems to crumple up when he receives it. Now, that's done. Lead me to the door, boy. Jim leads him to the door. Good day to you, Bill. He goes out. Jim comes running back to the captain, who stands staring at the paper in his hand. Jim, as the captain stands swaying back and forth dizzily, and looking down at the paper in his hand, What, what is it? The black spot. Turns over the paper and reads, Till ten o'clock. With increasing force, as if getting an idea, They've got me, but they shan't have that chest. Flint's fist, Bill Bones is still in command. They shan't have it, they shan't, they shan't. He stumbles up to the door, and then as he gets there, with a hoarse cry he puts his arm before his eyes and stumbles back into the room. He reels, puts his hand to his throat, stands swaying a moment, and then, with a peculiar sound, falls from his whole height foremost to the floor. Falls right of stairs. Jim bends over the captain. Captain! Captain! Feels his chest. Oh! With a frightened cry, he starts back as Mrs. Hawkins enters, left too. Mother! Points to Captain. The Captain! Dead! Glory be! Get a candle. You sent word to the doctor? Starts away. Mrs. Hawkins, holding Jim back. Yes. What are you going to do? The Captain said I was to get the money he owes us out of his sea chest, and I'm going to do it. Moves toward body. Jim. Jim gets key from Captain's hand. Oh, Jim, don't. Bring the candle, Mother. Goes upstairs, followed by Mrs. Hawkins. Off stage. Ah! Mrs. Hawkins, still at door. What is it? Jim, off stage. A quadrant. Tobacco. But the money, Jim, the money. Jim, enters on stairs. Here it is. I'll take my due. Not a penny more. What kind of money is this? Pieces of eight, Spanish and French. Spanish and French? Jim, who was this man? A pirate, a buccaneer. He sailed in that ship with Flint. Pirates? 
All of them. Pirate's gold. Put it back. I won't touch it. Lock it up again. All right, mother. Exits and trunk slams. Re-enters. It's all right. I've got it. Got what? The package you said I was to take to the doctor. Pews taps. What's that? The blind man. He was here before for the captain. They'll be murdering us all now. Jim, drawing mother downstairs. Come, mother, quick. The back way. I can't. My legs won't move. Come, come. They exit. Flagstone outside door for Pew to tap. Noise outside. Down with the door. If they won't open it, beat it down. Will you open it or must we break it down? When no answer comes. Down with the door then, men. Aye, aye. Down with her. The men batter on the door as if with a large log. Finally, the door is splintered to pieces. Aye, that's it, that's it. Now in, in, in with you. There is a shout as the men rush in. Black Dog, Mary, Hans, O'Brien, followed by Pew. To left center. Now, scatter. Search everywhere. Quick, quick, I say. Well, what's the matter? Why do you stop? What is it? What is it? Mary and Hans over body. Black Dog at steps. Anderson to fireplace right. Mary, who with the other men have stumbled over Bill and stand eyeing him. Bill's dead. Well? Well? He's dead. Done for. Don't you understand, Pew? Search him, you shirkin lovers. The chart's here somewhere, and we are gonna get it. Find that chest. Look for it. It's here, Pew. Open it quick. It's locked. Anderson, with poker, crosses to left. Break it open. Smash it open. Chest thrown downstairs and smashed open. Is it there? The chart? They've been here before us. Someone's turned the chest, allow and aloft. Hands, who has been searching through the chest. There's some money. Hang the money. It's Flint's fist I want. Flint's fist. We don't see it nowhere. And Bill's been overhauled already. Nothing left. It's that boy. I wish I'd put his eyes out. That chart must be here somewhere. Scatter and look for it. The men dash upstairs and shout. Look everywhere. Under the table. Be beyond the curtains. Turn everything upside down. The men turn over the tables, tear down the hangings. Hands tips over the chairs and scatters over the place all the furniture. A whistle is heard. What's that? It's Dirk's warning. We'll have to budge, mates. Budge, you skulk. We don't stir until we find that chart. But that signal... You have your hands on it. Scatter and look for it. Don't oh, shiver my soul if I had my eyes. Another whistle. Hans rushes in and the others. Well, well, why are you coming back? Twice. You heard. Jack's called. We better go. Pew stands in the doorway. Not one of you are going to leave. Why, you fools, you have your hands on thousands and you hang a leg. You'd be rich as kings, and you stand there malingering. And I'm to lose my chance for you. If you had the pluck of a weevil and a biscuit, you'd stand your ground. We're not going to stand here and be caught. Not one of you goes till you find it. Or maybe you've got it. The whistle again, and sharply. And you're hiding it on me. Stand out of the way, Pew. We're going... You're not. I believe you've got it and trying to hide it from me. Give it to me or you don't pass. There is the sound of horses approaching. Don't you hear them coming? Those horses. Out of the way. Not until you give it. All right then, men. At him. They make a lunge at Pew, who strikes back with his staff. They quickly overpower him and throw him into a far corner of the room. Then they rush out as the horses are heard stopping nearby. Dr. Livesey's voice is heard giving orders without. There they go. After them. Pew, groping blindly. 
Black dog, hands, you won't leave old Pew. You'll save your old mate. Jim glides in. You'll save. Who's there? Who is it? Answer. It is I, Jim Hawkins. You. You stole that shirt. By the living thunder, if I get my hands on you, I'll tear your heart out. I'll... Making big sweeps with his cane, he rushes about. Jim, terrified. Help, Squire! Dr. Livesey, help! I'll get you, you young rat! I'll get you! Jim, as Pew comes nearer, darts out the door. Squire! Dr. Livesey, help! Quick! I'll get you! I'll wring your neck! He rushes out the door. Then of a sudden, there is the report of a pistol. There is a shriek, and then Jim rushes into the room. Almost at once, he is followed by the squire and Dr. Livesey. Jim, what's this story we hear about pirates? It's true, sir. This was Flint's crew. Yes, sir, and that man there was Flint's mate. But if this is true... Here, sir, is the proof of it. Offers packet. What's this? I took it from his sea chest there. It's a map showing where Flint buried his treasure. What? By God, if this should be... Thousands upon thousands Flint buried, and hundreds have tried to find it. If this should prove the clue to Flint's treasure... Tall tree, spyglass, mountain bearing a point to the north of N.N.E. Black dog appears. Skeleton Island, E.S.E. The gold is in the north cache. By gad, Livesey, that's it. We'll go to Bristol, we'll fit out a ship, and we'll have that treasure if it takes a year. And Hawkins shall go with us. You don't mean it. To go to sea with a piping bosun and a pigtail singing seaman, bound for an unknown island to seek buried treasure? Curtain. End of Act One. Act Two of Treasure Island, a play in four acts, by Jules Eckert Goodman. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One, The Key at Bristol. The entire back of stage is taken up with a sailing vessel tied to her pier. Upon her side there is painted her name, Hispaniola. A gangplank comes from the ship's side down to the wharf. At right, some dusty old buildings line the side down right intermediate, where there is a small inn with a sign of a spyglass hanging from above the door. There is a bench in front of this inn, and from its window hangs a cage with a parrot. The left side is taken up with a large warehouse, down to left intermediate, where there is the entrance to a street. The center of the stage is taken up with barrels and coils of rope and boxes. When the curtain rises, three or four men, each with a box or a barrel upon his shoulders, are starting for the ship from the wharf. They go up the gangplank upon the ship, and then vanish from sight. Then the stage is deserted. From his cage, the parrot calls, Pieces of eight! Stand by to go about. Pieces of eight. Finally there comes hurriedly in from left intermediate, Black Dog, followed by a man. Black Dog goes to the inn door at right intermediate, and peers in. Within, men can be seen drinking. At times, bits of song come out. A roistering scene. Fruit Girl, down left, seated. Black Dog enters from street up left, goes to window turns from door to his companion. See that man in there with one leg, hopping about on a crutch. Yes. You go up to him quiet-like and say, Silver, there's a man out there as would like to talk to you. As the man starts in, quiet-like, remember. The man goes in. Black Dog gazes through the window for a moment, then he goes up to the ship and stares at her. From within the inn there comes sound of songs and ribaldry. At last Silver appears at the door left. Who's looking for Long John Silver? Black Dog turns. Black Dog. A nice turn you did me. 
leaving me there at the cove. And a nice turn you all did me with your bungling, you and Pew and the rest of you, letting a fortune slip through your fingers. Points inside the inn where the men are singing. Look at em there. All you're good for is to come wine into silver and drink his grog. Easy there, Long John. Well, it's so, isn't it? Isn't it? Black Dog comes up confidentially as if having something to tell. When we all ran from that place, I got lost in the fog. Looks about cautiously. Well? Well, I must have run in a circle, for I landed up again where I started. The inn? Black Dog goes to him center, nods. It was dark, and I crept up to the windy. Yes. There was Billy Bones a dead upon the floor, and at a table, three of em pawin' over a chart. Flint's fist. Flint's fist. Three of em, you say? One was a boy. He'd got the chart and given it to the men. And the men? One they called Doctor. And the other, the other? He was older, and looked your country gentleman. His name? It was Squire. Squire something, or... Squire Trelawney? Black Dog astonished. The very same. Ha! I guessed it, I guessed it. But... Silver points to Hispaniola. See that boat? That belongs to Squire Trelawney. As Black Dog starts. And she's sailing on sealed orders. Then, you know. The Squire and I have already passed the time of day. I've been watching him. I've been wondering what this is all about. With sudden change. That's why I have all the men in there now. Any of them see you down at the cove? None but the boy. And he saw only Pew and me. Good. Confidentially. They haven't shipped their crew yet. I'm going to try to make our friends here take us to Flint's treasure, in their own ship. I even find the treasure for us, and then... What then? Sinister. Then we'll pay him for it. Trelawney and Smollett appear upon the ship. Silver points them out to Black Dog, turns him around. Either one of those your squire? Aye. The old man... Go inside. You'll find all the men there, but not a word. Black Dog goes into the inn. Silver wanders up the quay as Smollett and the squire come down from the boat. I will try, sir, but they are not so easy to get. My dear Captain Smollett, there must be plenty of men. But your requirements are peculiar, sir. What, merely men? Not afraid of anything on sea or land? Surely, sir. English manhood has not gone back so far that the spirit of adventure is lost. Oh, very well, sir. But asking your pardon, I don't know the nature of this voyage. And are not to. Sealed orders, sir. Quite right. But you must realize this makes it difficult to get men. Honest men. It shouldn't. England has stood for centuries for her sailors to unknown lands and on unknown seas, her drakes and raleys, and hawks, and... Very well, sir. I'll do the best I can. Starts away up left. Squire follows him up. And make haste, Captain. My friends come within three days. I must be ready then. I'll try, sir. He goes off left upstage. The squire is going toward the vessel when Silver puts himself in his way. Silver, left center, indicates ship. I never tire of looking at her, sir. Pretty, isn't she? Never saw a sweeter little craft. Squire, indicates Silver's loss of leg. Not a seafaring man? I lost that, sir, in defense of my country. Squire, drawing nearer, interested. Did you now? I, sir, under the immortal hawks. What? Not really? A fact, sir. Pensioned, of course? No, sir. Never asked it, never needed it. I keep the spyglass there. Still, you should have your reward. I have, sir. Salutes. In England, my country. God bless her. Squire, enthusiastically. A fine spirit. The true spirit of an Englishman. There's only one thing. My health's not been good ashore. Having been to sea so long, that's why I keep my inn here on the quay, where I can get a bit of salt air and meet seafaring men. Why, every sailor as comes to port knows Long John Silver. Do they now? 
They're all welcome, sir, whether they can pay or no, because of my love of her out there. See. The squire Trelawney starts rather surprised at Silver. I tell you, when the sea ones get into you, sir, it's hard to ever lose her. May sound queer to you, sir, but it's a fact. Squire, studying Silver. No, no, I think I understand. When I think of the times I've seen dirty weather and clear fights at close quarters, hand to hand and cutlass against cutlass, against pirate and buccaneer. Squire starts, but Silver hurries on. And then I think to me in there doling out grog, and sir, it's like torture. When I come out here and see a trim little schooner like that assailing, well, I'd give my life, sir, for just one more chance at the old sea. Squire, who has been thinking and studying Silver. You say you know every seafaring man in Bristol? Ay, sir, they all come to the spyglass. Well, suppose, just suppose now, I wanted a special sort of crew. Men, not only sailors, but fighters, perhaps. Silver points to Inn. There are men in there now, enough to man this boat, men who have sailed as I have sailed, against Flint himself. Silver's parrot begins to squawk. Excuse me, sir, that's my parrot. I call him Captain Flint. That's why he piped up when he heard the name. You mean to say you have sailed against Flint? It's to him I owe the loss of this. Indicates Leg. You see, sir, that's what makes it so hard, to have been through all that and to sit idle and hear the sea calling, begging for a chance, sir, a chance that means life, sir. Suppose now you were offered that chance. You don't mean it, sir. You could help me get together a crew? Yes, sir. At once? I'll see to everything, sir. As the squire starts, Silver goes on quickly. But there are honest men in there, Englishmen, ready for any purpose. I like your talk, sir. You're engaged. Oh, thank you, sir. And now, about a crew. My captain has found difficulty. Might I ask, sir, what sort of voyage this is to be? Why? So I may judge about the men. I want tough men, such as you just spoke of, men willing to board Flint himself. I know the very men for you. They're in there now. You go to your cabin, and I'll send them to you. Very well. If I could get them before Captain Smollett returns? I'm sure you can... I'll show him. He with his trouble about getting honest men. Send them along, Silver. Starts up boat. Yes, sir, at once, sir. And I want to thank you, sir. Squire goes up on ship. Not at all. Glad we met, Silver. It's a great thing for me, sir, a great thing. The squire disappears in the schooner. Silver's manner changes at once. Heaven has sent him to me. He hastens to the door of the inn and calls, Hands, Arrow, Morgan, Anderson, Mary, all you men. They all come out. Black Dog, next to Silver. Was I right? It's Flint's treasuries after all right. Hands makes movement toward ship. There is a slight change of manner. I'm to engage his crew. There is much astonishment and guffawing among the crew at this. Easy. There, you are to be that crew. You are to go to him now. You, Arrow, are to be mate. Aye, Captain. Anderson Coxswain. Coxswain, is it? Mary, you Boatswain. My old job. The rest of you as he pleases. He's waiting in his cabin for you. Go now, quick. Act natural, nothing suspicious. As they start away. Look innocent and fierce. On with you. They start to leave when Silver holds back Black Dog, who crosses last. Wait. Well? He might recognize you. I told you I saw only the boy. We'll take no chances. You'll stay hidden in there till we sail. As Black Dog makes a gesture of protest, he pushes him toward the inn door. We've got him baited, and we'll get him, hook and all. He shoves Black Dog into the inn, and then he goes quickly up on the ship. Pieces of eight! Pieces of eight! Curtain Act Two, Scene Two The Key at Bristol The Hispaniola Ready to Sail When the curtain rises, there is a string of men going between the ship and wharf, carrying boxes and barrels upon their shoulders. The pirate crew. Upon the side of the ship, there stands Israel Hands, with Bosun's whistle, as if directing the men. A little farther away stands Captain Smollett, watching. As the men work, some sing a rude sea song, but not the fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Others are shouting and talking excitedly. 
about the whole scene there is an air of excitement and noise hands as the last man comes up the plank at all anderson comes aboard with a box aye aye sir that's all of it hands turns to smollett and salutes captain smollett smollett upper deck well mr hands everything right sir sure you've missed nothing sure sir all ready to cast off all sir all ready shall i give the word sir black dog enters squire trelawney is not here yet have all the men stand by aye aye sir mr hands yes sir smollett with change who gave you the orders for the stowing of those stores i thought you did sir smollett dismissing him very well aye aye sir goes out for a moment smollett stands as if thinking and then he turns as if to follow hands meanwhile black dog has sneaked upon the scene and is slinking up the gangplank when smollett turns and sees him well my man who are you black dog on gangplank a uh, a friend of the crew sir i have a message this boat is ready to sail no one boards her now but sir it's important most important i see him who silver sir long john silver smollett calls silver john silver silver without hi sir man to see you silver coming coming sir coming what is it sir sees black dog and starts this fellow here says he has a message for you silver recovering himself and feigning surprise a message for me my good man aye silver noticing that smollett is watching and that black dog is growing embarrassed well well speak up my man black dog indicates in there's someone there as would like to talk to you he said it was important silver to smollett i don't know who it could be nor what he wants can i go ashore sir we're all ready to cast off i won't be but a jiffy sir very well goes out thank you sir comes down with black dog and turns fiercely upon him left by all the powers what you trying to do that boat's sailing well it'll never sail without me if i don't go i'll blow up the whole thing as silver starts to threaten him i will i'm going you hear you'll do as i say hands comes rushing down silver crosses to gangplank how now hands that captain smart what's he done he's down below snooping around you put the powder where i told you ay and their men bunked with ours ay did he notice it i don't know he acts suspicious like silver turns angrily on black dog you hear that black dog you hear now you go inside there and wait go i say or by thunder i'll run you through black dog driven to the inn door you'll never go without me never go black dog goes in silver storms luck never came with that man suddenly hands black dog doesn't go on this cruise aye aye silver as squire and dr livesey come from street left up stage go inside there watch him don't leave him out of your sight and wait your chance and when you get it you know what to do stiletto bus hands goes in as dr livesey and squire come down aye aye sir exits into door of inn i don't know what to make of it i am sure he'll come squire silver comes forward everything ready and ship shape just waiting for you sir squire trelawney testily hawkins hasn't come you told him he might stay till the last minute with his mother if we wait we'll miss the tide that means another twelve hours delay sir look at her there everything ready and to be held up now by gad it's hard sir would you mind if i took my old shipmate captain flint with us he goes on all my voyages with me starts away and then stops oh perhaps you gentlemen would join us and a glass of grog or thank you silver but if you'll excuse me certainly sir i understand sir goes in an honest fellow 
and capable. Well, Squire, I don't usually put much faith in your discoveries, but John Silver suits me. Start for boat. That man's a perfect trump. We've grown quite familiar. Squire, you haven't told him anything. Not a word. I have been most discreet. On the contrary, I've got all his little secrets from him. As they start for the boat, he leaves a wife to manage his inn. Indeed. A lady of color. No. They laugh and go up into the boat. Enter Jim, left up stage with bundle, goes to inn and knocks. Well, my lad? Silver, Mr. Silver, I'm looking for... That's my name, lad, and who may you be? Hand Silver a letter, sent her. Hawkins, sir. Oh, I see. You are our new cabin boy. Pleased I am to see you. We've been waiting for you. There is a sound of commotion within the inn. Oh, sir, what's that? Silver puts Jim behind him, trying to cover the noise. Oh, that, that's nothing, lad. Just the men drinking there in my house. I think it's a fight. Black Dog, pursued by hands, appears at the door. I know my rights, and you can't stop me. I'd fight the whole crew of you. Exit left upstage. Jim suddenly recognizes Black Dog, cries out, points excitedly to Black Dog. Why, it's Black Dog! Stop him, sir, stop him! Hands, after that man, quick! Hands rushes out, left. It was Black Dog, I'm sure of it. I don't care two coppers who he is. He hasn't paid a score. What did you say his name was? Black what? Black Dog, sir. Hasn't Mr. Trelawney told you of the Buccaneers? What? He was one of them, sir. So? One of those swabs in my house? As Hans returns, comes on from street, left up stage. Well? He got away, sir. You know who that was, Hans? No, sir. Black Dog. Isn't it so, Hawkins? Yes, sir. And do you know who Black Dog is? No, sir. One of Flint's crew. As Hans starts. Now, Hans, you was drinking with him in there. Aye, that's who you've let go. Now board with you and be a little more particular who you can sort with hereafter. Hans exits ship. Now see here, Hawkins, this is a blessed hard thing on a man like me. There's Squire Trelawney. What's he to think? Here I have this confounded son of a Dutchman sitting in my own house drinking my own rum. Here you comes and tells me of it plain, and I let him give us a slip before my blessed deadlines. It wasn't your fault. Nay, that it wasn't, but it might look so. I'll explain it to the squire. Will you now? Just as soon as I see them. No, no, lad. You wait till we sail. And then when he sees how I work and knows me better, then you ups and tells him, and he'll understand. Very well, sir. There's a lad for you, and... Stops suddenly and breaks out into a laugh. Why, what a precious old sea calf I am. What is it, sir? That swab got away without paying his score. Three goes of rum. Shiver my timbers if I hadn't forgotten my score. Falls on a bench laughing. Tash my buttons, but that's a good one about my score. As they laugh, Squire and Dr. Livesey come down from ship. Jim, my lad, we've been anxious about you. Where have you been? It was Mother kept me, sir. She's so afraid, and she's quite alone. I sent her a boy to take your place. Yes, sir, and very kind it was. Only, he can't take my place, sir. That's conceit for you, squire. Oh, no, no, sir. You see, there's just mother and me now, and we've never been parted before. Doctor comes up and pets Jim. There, there, Jim, I understand, of course. Silver, significantly to the squire. Begging your pardon, sir. Don't you think it might be good if I took him on board, sir? Oh, I'm all right, sir. I'm all right. Silver crosses right to Jim. Come with me, lad. Silver will show you your quarters. Leads him up gangplank. And now the ship's company is complete, and... Captain Smollett comes hurrying down. Well, sir, all ready to sail? We mustn't miss this tide, sir. Squire Trelawney, I don't like this cruise, and I don't like my crew. Eh? I was engaged to sail this ship under sealed orders. Right. Then if that is so, how is it that every man before the mast knows more than I do? Squire. That's not true. I learn we are going after treasure. Now, treasure is ticklish work, and I don't like the treasure voyages on any account. But when they're secret, and the secret's been blabbed... Blabbed? 
Yes, sir, blabbed. Why, sir, it's life or death and a close run. If you're afraid... Doctor, holding back Squire. Squire. To Smollett. You say you don't like the crew. Aren't they good seamen? Squire crosses right to Apple Stand. I dare him to deny that. Six of the men I chose were discharged. They were fresh water swabs. Silver showed me that. Crosses to box, sits. And do you think it fair that this Silver, the ship's cook, should have had more authority than I in choosing my own crew? It was a chance to get men quickly. A slur on me, sir. Dr. L as Squire is about to reply. Captain Smollett, just what are you aiming at? Come. You gentlemen know the risks you're running. We do. And you are determined to go? We are. Then I have this to say. Without my orders, those men put all the powder and arms in the forehold. There's a place under our cabin. Why not put them there? But... Dr. L stopping the squire. All right, Captain. What else? You have some of your people with you. You don't doubt them, too. Berth them beside the cabin. Dr. L intercepting the squire as he again starts to answer. Go on, Captain Smollett. I've heard you have a certain chart. That there are crosses on that chart. Squire rises, startled. I never told that to a soul. Every man aboard knows it, sir. Then, Livesey, it must have been you. I don't know who has this chart, and I don't want to know. But I insist it be kept secret. In short, you fear a mutiny. I deny your right, sir, to put those words into my mouth. No captain would be justified in going to sea if he had grounds to say that. What then? Some of these men may be honest. Perhaps all are. But I am responsible for the ship's safety and the life of every man Jack aboard her. And I demand that I be allowed to take these precautions. Or I resign. Well, then. You can. Wait. I agree with Captain Smollett. I think it wise to do as Captain Smollett says. Very well, then. I am overruled. Turns to Captain. But let me tell you, I think the worse of you, Captain Smollett. But do as you wish. Thank you, sir. As soon as we are under way, I'll give orders for the removal of the arms from the forehold. Captain goes to his position on the boat. Squire, as he and Dr. Livesey follow. I should have sent him packing. Squire, I think you have two honest men aboard. Captain Smollett and John Silver. Bows and ahoy! Bows and blows. Pipe all hands. Enter crew. Aye, aye, sir. Doesn't it set you all a tingle, Livesey? Top man aloft. Aye, aye, sir. Squire, coming up to top of gangplank. Off at last, Livesey. Loose the top gallant. Aye, aye, sir. Seaward ho! Hang the treasure. Doctor, at foot of gangplank. Squire. Squire. It's the glory of the sea that's turned my head. Dr. Livesey and Squire go on ship. Cast off your gangplank. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. All on your main sheet. Aye, aye, sir. Crew does so and starts to sing fifteen men. Black Dog enters from street and sneaks aboard. Squire has gone up on bridge. Jim. Jim. Is Jim aboard? Jim dashes out from among the pirates. Here, doctor. Cast off your hawser, forward. We're starting, sir. We're starting. Jim turns towards pirates. Livesey. Doctor goes to Squire. Jim turns from pirates. That was the song the captain used to sing. The pirate's song. Bustle until curtain. Act 2, Scene 3. The Hispaniola at anchor close to Treasure Island. The part of ship shown is some of the stern and most of the amidships, the main part of the stage being taken up with what is called the waist of the ship. Upon the right, however, there is seen a small portion of the poop, 
with small brass cannon mounted upon it in the background there can be seen a vague outline of treasure island with spyglass mountain glowing in the moonlight when the curtain rises the men are discovered in with trelawney smollett and dr livesey others of the men are along the rail some even in the rigging smollett on upper deck and using his hands as megaphone all fast there forward folding up chart etc all fast sir anchorage good aye aye sir the current's pretty strong here how's she holding firm in over seven fathoms sir she isn't dragging an inch good turns to crew in waist my lads that island there is the place we've been sailing to murmurs of satisfaction among crew etc squire trelawney has a word to say captain smollett has told me how every man of you has done his duty alow and aloft as i never asked to see it better done and so to show my appreciation i've had silver here make ready a special mess and double grog below decks as the crew gives a shout my lads i hold this handsome and if you think as i do you'll give a good sea cheer for squire trelawney as the crew cheer come now below and we'll drink a health to these gentlemen below i'll go off with talking and gesticulating left well captain smollett you'll admit now you were wrong how so sir a splendid voyage a fine brisk crew and here we are ay sir here we are but we're not home again by heavens there's no pleasing you i'm going below as he goes out right a trifle more of that man and i should explode smollett to dr livesey yes sir have you seen nothing suspicious yes much then i believe you're right i tell you this crew is on the verge of mutiny and stops short as he sees hands come from men's quarters what is it mr hands some of the men didn't report to mess sir just looking for him sir as smollett watches him keenly haven't seen him about deck sir have you not a soul hands thank you sir exits to upper deck where he continues his search now and then looking surreptitiously at dr livesey and smollett who watch him his actions are suspicious you see that there's something in the air we'll hear from that crew before the night's over i believe you're right then we must take some precautions squire or no squire come below we must make the squire listen to reason they go out they have scarcely gone when black dog steals in left he makes over toward the cabin when he is met by hands who comes from upper deck where are you going down to that cabin and if i find that boy you're not you're going below stand out of my way you heard silver's orders ay i've heard his orders and i've heard his talk and hands whistles so you've signalled for him shiver my timbers but you'll pay for that springs at hands and they struggle pantingly without words as they do so jim who has been in the rigging but up so high that he is out of sight now comes slowly down it is evident that he has heard and now he watches the fight he comes slyly down and is making toward the cabin as if to go tell the captain when he is startled by some one approaching in fright he turns to hide he sees the apple barrel and jumps into it as mary comes rushing in mary trying to separate the men here black dog hands silver and the rest of the men come rushing on deck what's all this put up those knives i found these two trying to carve each other up the men are pulled apart i caught him making for the cabin silver to black dog you heard my orders the men are back of me in this are they well who's captain here i'd like to know by thunder i'll show you the whole pack you give me that knife give it to me black dog gives up his knife and silver turns to hands here hands i place him in your charge at the first word the first sign you kill him understand kill him black dog as he goes off with hands i'll pay you for this long john if he touches me i'll tear him to pieces out left silver turns to the men who are in groups 
john john we want to wait indicates cabin and the men look stealthily to see if any one is about all clear others murmur the same or no one here etc now then out with it we men want to know how long we're going to hold off by the powers till the last minute i can manage as the men make an angry start they've got that chart and until we have it we make no move and didn't we see it this very night here in their hands if you had let us at em then and you think they'll sit still and let you cut their throats while doing it eh we're nineteen to six and we've taken a vote oh have you now we know our rights long john another word george mary and foxel council long john them's rules 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 is it i'll show ye rules you'll have all the rules you want sounds of fighting in foxel stops suddenly what's that it's hands and black dog stop him stop him quick below with you all quick here comes the doctor if the squire hears that rumpus will be ditched quick don't let them see anything as the men rush out dr livesey and squire and smollett come in what was that noise silver noise sir i didn't notice anything if there's anything wrong i'll soon settle it you can trust me sir goes out quickly of course i trust you it's only ridiculous trouble seekers that do not it's you're wrong sir turns to dr livesey oh sir i've been in there and i heard it's mutiny sir and talk about treasure and falling on us to get our charts sir what's that yes it's silver sir he's a seafaring man with one leg that sailed with flint they're pirates flint's crew they know what we are after and they've used us to get their ship and sail it for them to the very treasure place that's it that explains everything turns on squire squire you trusted silver i did and silver got it from you are you convinced now squire captain you were right i was wrong i own myself an ass and await orders captain to jim did you hear anything of their plans they're arguing down there now the men are all for attack but silver's all for holding them back if he only if he only could how many men can we count on they said they were nineteen to six six that must be red ruth joyce hunter and ourselves then there are some who are doubtful well count on six ammunition and arms with us by gad if silver can only hold them off if we can get a little time this ship needs water without it she can't sail now according to your chart there is just one place on that island where water can be had the stockade now if we can make the stockade with our arms and provisions by heaven sir they'd have to come to us if we could only hold them off for a time joyce rushes in how now joyce joyce by door begging your pardon sir but there's things come over that crew go on first they tried to make red ruth and hunter and me join em and when we refused they shut themselves in a corner by themselves well i stole back and listened it's all about a chart sir and they're coming to demand it good lord silver's been trying to hold em back sir but i'm afraid if they don't get it sir why it's mutiny sir and death what shall we do captain smollett i beg your pardon sir you say it's time you want yes yes well then why not give them the map sir what they think the map that captain smollett has to sail the ship by is the right one couldn't we give them that jim i think you've hit it turns to squire that map you gave me was a true one except for the crosses where the treasure is buried it was jim you'll find that chart down in my cabin take it put some crosses on it put them anywhere understand yes sir then bring it up here and slip it into the squire's hand hurry jim rushes out i believe the lad has sold it captain turns to dr livesey and squire now in case this comes to an issue are you gentlemen willing to fight them to the last sir aye sir very well have your pistols primed they are sir and mine sir joyce as soon as those men come from below take all the muskets and load them drag as much powder and shot into the cabin as you can very well sir stand there on guard let no one touch it right sir if it comes to a fight 
We'll fight back to the cabin and the ammunition. We've got a chance, gentlemen, just a bare chance. And if we don't make it, we'll sell our lives dear. Steady now. Steady, all. The pirates led by Silver come forward in an angry group. Silver, however, is apparently trying to cover his face somewhat. Well, my men, this looks like a deputation. It is, sir, a deputation. Well, what is it? These men, sir. These men, sir, have been hearing rumors. Rumors? Rumors, sir, as how this ship was under sealed orders. And them sealed orders are treasure, sir. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Treasure. treasure. And who told you that? You did, sir. I? I, sir. Now such things getting to the ears of the men makes them sort of greedy, sir, and— Do you mean to say that this is mutiny? You can call it what you want, sir. Why, damn me, I'll have you put in irons. I'll— Silver, as the men with ugly threats go toward Smollett, speaks to Squire. I think you'd better know, sir. I've counseled peace and fair terms. Well? Silver, to Squire always. We are told that you have a certain chart. The crew draws nearer in a threatening manner. With certain crosses on it. We want that chart. Silver, I trusted you. The chart, sir. Do we get it? Do we? Smollett, as Squire goes to answer. Wait. Suppose we give this chart to you. What then? What then? Aye, what then? What happens to us? Why? Why nothing, sir? You mean you'll not harm us? No. Your solemn promise? Solemn promise. Smollett, to the men. You, you men, you hear? You give your word to? Cries of, ay, ay. Very well, then. Much as I think you are a pack of scoundrels, and hope to see you all hanged. The men come threateningly at him. Why, I know when I'm beaten. Squire, get the chart. Very well. Silver, as Squire starts out. Wait, I'll send a man with you. No need. Jim! Yes, sir. You know where that chart is, Jim? Yes, sir. Bring it here. In a jiffy, sir. Silver, as the men press forward. Now then, ready with the boats, men. Quick, get them ready. As men get to work, lowering the boats. I'll stand guard and watch, for I tell you I can't trust you, Captain Smollett. Smollett, down left. Well, I can't say as I trust you either, Silver. As Jim comes in with chart. Silver rushes forward. Wait. Remember your promise. Aye. Then let them have it, Jim. As Jim gives Silver the map, all the men with a cry spring forward. Now then, pals, settle with them. Back! Back! Squire and Dr. Livesey and Smollett all draw their guns. Your promise! By heavens, gentlemen, if you come a step further! Silver turns to the men. Stop, stop, I say, you fools, you blockheads. Well, haven't we got the chart? That was Flint's crew. I've seen Flint's ship of muck with blood and fit to sink with gold. Aye, gold that's buried there, gold that's ours by rights, belongs to us who have sailed with Flint. Flint was captain, you may as well know. I was quartermaster. As he sees the men again threatening, he goes closer to Smollett and speaks low. They're rough lot there. It's all I can do to hold them. You'd better go below. Quick, go! I warn you. Go. As soon as Smollett and Squire and Doctor go, the men all make a dash as if they would follow them. Now then, men, after them, we'll finish this up. Wait. Haven't we got the chart, haven't we? Yes, and we got it too easy. Too easy? It don't look natural. There's something behind it. A trick. Maybe a wrong chart. Then we'll find out soon enough. Come, lads, come. Starts right, all. Jim, stepping forward left. Wait. The men, surprised, stop. It was the chart I got from Billy Bones. I brought it from the captain's cabin. I ought to know whether it's the right one. You go down there and attack and you'll lose everything. They're waiting for you. Their muskets and pistols primed. They've got all the guns and ammunition. You go and you'll lose your ship, your chart, and your lives. You say this is the right chart? We'll let you risk your life on it. I mean, we'll take you along as a hostage. As Jim starts. That makes a start, eh? Recovering himself. I'm willing to go. All right, we'll see. Hands. Aye, aye, sir. Hands and O'Brien come forward. Hands, you and O'Brien stay here to watch the ship. The first sign of anything, 
You fire and tell the squire from me that shot from this boat will be a signal for Hawkins' death. And tell the squire from me that Jim Hawkins isn't afraid. In with him. Toss him in. As they toss him in. Now then over with you all. As the men scramble on the boats. Push them off. Gets over the side and can be heard calling. Away with them. There are shouts and cries as the men push off. Hans and O'Brien crowd the rail, staring after the boats. Then slowly and cautiously, with muskets raised, there come upon the deck Squire, Smollett, Dr. Livesey, Red Ruth, Hunter, and Joyce and Gray. When Hans and O'Brien turn, they confront the muskets. Up with your hands! Up with them! What's this? Joyce, take away their guns. Joyce, going to men and taking guns. Right, sir. Hands, starting to lower his hands. But... Up with them, I say. Now I warn you, you fire. You just fire one shot, and it means the death of Hawkins. What's that? They've taken him with them. I was to tell you that the first shot from this boat is a signal for death. What? Come, Livesey, to the boat. Where are you going? Going? By all the stars, we're going to rescue that boy. You men did just what we wanted you to. We've tricked you, and we're going to fight you to the end. And I tell you this much, and you can tell Silver. God help you all if anything happens to that boy. Curtain End of Act Two Act Three of Treasure Island, a play in four acts by Jules Eckert Goodman. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, in front of Ben Gunn's cave. When the curtain rises, the stage is in darkness. The darkness just before dawn. Then gradually the light comes stealing in turning the black to grey, and until this melts into tones of early dawn, the whole reaching a sort of climactic effulgence with the rise of the sun. Birds and morning fowl are heard in the trees, the whistle of insects, which always ushers in dawn, the call of here and there an animal. There is no sign of anything human, the whole atmosphere of the scene suggesting a place in its primal beauty. Then, suddenly, when the sun has fully risen above the horizon, from the side of the hill which was here, steep and stony, a spout of gravel is dislodged and falls rattling and bounding through the trees. The next instant comes half creeping, half sliding from his cave, Ben Gunn, almost cannibal-like. He looks about hurriedly, and then, reassured, crawls up to a crevice in the rocks from which there trickles a small stream of water lying full length upon the ground, drinks. Then of a sudden he starts as if he heard something. Again reassured, he again stoops to drink. But this time he arises hurriedly and with more decision. He goes quickly to the left and peers through the trees. Apparently seeing no one, he goes to the right and searches there. Then suddenly, with a half-smothered cry, he turns, runs up back, and hides. Jim enters almost at once. For a moment he looks about wonderingly. He seems weary and tired, and he is about to go on when suddenly he catches sight of Ben Gunn hiding. All alert now, he stops. My eyes turned instinctively in that direction, and I saw a figure leap with great rapidity behind the trunk of a pine. What it was, whether a bear or man or monkey, I could in no wise tell. It seemed dark and shaggy. More I knew not. But the terror of this new apparition brought me to a stand. I was now, it seemed, cut off upon both sides. Behind me the murderers, before me this lurking nondescript, and immediately I began to prefer the dangers I knew to those I knew not. Silver himself appeared less terrible in contrast with this creature of the woods, and I turned upon my heel, looking sharply behind me over my shoulder, and began to retrace my steps in the direction of the boats. Instinctively the figure reappeared, and, making a wide circle, began to head me off. 
I was tired, I was tired at any rate, but had I been as fresh as when I arose, I could see it was in vain for me to contend in speed with such an adversary. From trunk to trunk the creature flitted like a deer, running manlike on two legs, but unlike any man I had ever seen, stooping almost double as it ran. Yet a man it was. I could no longer be in doubt about that. I began to recall what I had heard of cannibals. I was within an ace of calling for help, but the mere fact that he was a man, however wild, had somewhat reassured me, and my fear of silver began to revive in proportion. I stood still, therefore, and cast about for some method of escape, and as I was so thinking, the recollection of my pistol flashed into my mind. As soon as I remembered I was not defenceless, courage glowed again in my heart, and I set my face resolutely for this man of the island, and walked briskly toward him. He was concealed by this time behind another tree trunk, but he must have been watching me closely, for as soon as I began to move in his direction, he reappeared and took a step to meet me. Then he hesitated, drew back, came forward again, and at last, to my wonder and confusion, threw himself on his knees and held out his clasped hands in supplication. Jim, who are you? Ben Gunn. I am poor Ben Gunn, I am. And I haven't spoken with a Christian these three years. Three years? I three blessed years. Shipwrecked here? Nay, mate. Marooned. Marooned? You mean put here purposely and left alone to live or die? I mate marooned three years ago and lived on goats since then and berries and oysters wherever man is says i man can do for himself but my my heart is more for christian diet confidentially stepped to jim uh, now you mightn't have a piece of cheese about you eh? jim shakes head no well, many's the long night I've dreamed of cheese, toasted, mostly, and wake up again, and here I were. If I get on board again, you shall have it by the ton. If ever you get on board again, says you. Looking toward sea. Yes. Why, now, who's to hinder you? Jim, noticing Gunn's manner and putting on a show of bravery. Not you, I know. Right you was. Now you, uh, what do you call yourself, mate? Jim. 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 Suddenly takes hold of Jim's clothing, as Jim draws back, half afraid. Oh, uh, there, there, now don't you be afraid of Ben Gunn. I'm not afraid. That's right. I've lived that rough you'd be ashamed to hear. Just look at these indicates his clothing rags tatters pieces of old ship's canvas and bits of old sea cloth all held together with brass buttons and bits of stick and loops of tarry gaskin now you look at me you'd never think i had a pious mother would you now why no not particularly uh, well i had remarkable pious and i was a civil pious boy and could rattle off my catechism that fast as you couldn't tell one word from another fact and here's what it came to jim points about the island and it began with chuck feathered in a cemetery on the blessed gravestones that's what it begun with but it went farther than that so my mother told me and predicted the whole she did the pious woman but how did you get here it were providence that put me here i've thought it all out on this here lonely island and i'm back on piety you don't catch me tasting rum so much but just a thimbleful of luck of course the <laughs> first chance i get I'm bound I'll be good, and... Takes him by the arm. I, I see the way, too. 
confidentially and looking about uh, jim i'm rich jim starting and trying to draw away rich you why rich rich i says but and i'll tell you what i'll make a man of you jim you bless your stars you will you was the first that found me and <laughs> suddenly with great change and intensity now jim you tell me true tell you what that ain't flint's ship out there it ain't no and flint is dead with evident relief ah but i'll tell you true as you ask me there are some of flint's hands aboard worse luck for the rest of us not a man with one leg silver ay silver he's cook and ringleader too if you was sent my long john i'm as good as pork and i know it i'm not sent by silver now tell me true jim you you tell me true i'm running from him he and his hands mutinied on us on who, mate? Squire Trelawney, and Captain Smollett, and Dr. Livesey. Mutinied, you say, Jim? Yes. We had come on that ship to look for Flint's treasure. Eh? Crosses to cave. We had Flint's map. Flint's fixed? And where did you get that? I got it from Bill Bones, when he died. Billy Bones dead, too? I gave it to the squire. Somehow Silver got wind of it. He managed to deceive the squire by appearing kindly and— Aye, that would be Silver's way. There was Flint. Barring rum, his match would never seen. He were afraid of none, not he. On his Silver. Silver was that genteel. Well, last night they made a demand for the map. The squire was in a hard way and gave it to them. Flint's fist? No, a false map. Uh oh, not the right one. No, but I think Silver suspected. He made me come along with them. As soon as the boats grounded, I jumped. Then I ran with all my might through the woods. All night I wandered about, until I found you. And now, sir, since I've told you, won't you help me get back to my friends? Won't you, please? So your squire gave him a false map, and kept the real one <laughs> sits on rock yes <laughs> that's a good <laughs> what what is it you're all in a clove hitch ain't you all in a clove hitch you will help me won't you you just put your trust in ben gunn ben gunn's the man to do it then you'll send me back Gun beckons Jim. Jim sits right of gun. Would you think it likely now your squire would prove liberally minded in case of help, him being in a clove hitch? Oh, I'm sure he would. Aye, but you see, I didn't mean giving me a gate to keep and a suit of livery clothes and such. That's not my mark, Jim. As Jim starts to reply, what i mean is would he likely come down to the tune of say one thousand pounds out of money that's as good as a man's own already you can count on it all the hands were to share and a passage home and a passage home the squire's a gentleman a gentleman born and not a gentleman of fortune eh, hey, jim of course Besides, if we get rid of the others, we should want you to help work the vessel home. Aye, so you would. And now, will you tell me how to get back to my friends? Will you? So much I'll tell you, and no more. Yes? I were in Flint's ship when he buried the treasure. You? He and six along, six strong seamen. They was ashore nigh on a week, and thus waiting in the bay at the old walrus. One day, up went the signal, and here come Flint, his head done up in a blue scarf, in a little boat, 
and all by himself. By himself? But the others? The sun was up, and mortal white he looked about the cut water. But there he was, you mind, and the six all dead. Dead and buried. How he done it, not a man aboard as could make out. It was battle, murder, and sudden death. Him against six. He killed them all? Aye, Billy Bones was mate. Long John, he were quartermaster. And they asked him where the treasure was. Ah, says he, you can go ashore if you like and stay. But as for the ship, she'll beat up for more by thunder. That's what he said. But then how, how did you come here? I was in another ship three years back, and we sighted this island. Boys, said I, here's Flint's treasure. Let's land and find it. The captain was displeased at that, but my messmates were all of one mind. Twelve days they looked for it, and every day they had a worse word for me, until one fine morning all hands went aboard. As for you, Benjamin Gunn, says he, here's a musket, they says, and a spade and a pickaxe. You stay here and find Flint's money for yourself, they says. Marooned you? Well, Jim, three years I've been here, and not a bite of Christian diet from that day to this. But now, look here, look at me. Well? Do I look like a man before the mast? Do I? No. No, says you. No, I won't, neither, says I. But then... Just you mentioned them words to your squire. No, he weren't neither, that's the word. But I don't understand. With more and more significance. Three years I were the man of this island, light and dark, fair and rain, and sometimes I would maybe think upon a prayer, says you, and sometimes I would maybe think of my old mother, so be as she's alive. You'll say, but the most part of Gun's time, this is what you'll say, the most part of his time was took up with another matter, and then you'll give him a nip like I do. Pinches Jim in the ribs. What do you mean? And you'll up and you'll say this. Gun's a good man, you'll say, and he puts a precious sight more confidence a precious sight, mind you, for a gentleman born than in these gentlemen of fortune, having been one himself. <laughs> I don't understand a word you're saying, but how on earth am I to tell these things to the squire if I can't get aboard? Ah, there's the hitch for sure. Can't you help me some way, can't you? Ay, lad, you put your trust in Ben Gunn. Then will you? Will you help me? I Crosses to boat, right center up. Points to his boat. Here's my boat. I made it with my own two hands. You'll let me take it? I lad. You may take it. And you'll come too. You'll help me reach the boat? Nay, lad. Not been gun. But you can have the coracle. Then I'll go alone. Here, help me launch it. As he starts to push out the boat, there is heard a salvo of shots. What? What was that? Crosses to rock, center. Shots? Then they've begun the fight already. What shall I do now? Wait. Crawls up the side of rock and peers anxiously in the distance. That wasn't from the boat. Where, then? Up on rock. Wait. Suddenly he utters a cry. What is it? Excitedly, looks off right. Oh, look, look, there, 
What do you see? The Union Jack. Aye, lad, the Union Jack. Flying over the old stockade as was made years and years ago, my friend. There are your friends, Jim. More like the mutineers. Now, Silver would fly the Jolly Roger. You don't make no doubt of that. No, that's your friends. There's been blows, and I reckon your friend has had the best of it. Then come, come quick. Down from rock to center. Ben follows, holding Jim back. Nay, mate. Ben gone as fly. Rum wouldn't bring me there where you're going. Not rum wouldn't, till I see a born gentleman, and gets it on his word of honor. Then let me go. Still holding Jim. You won't forget my words. No, no. A precious sight. That's what she'll say. A precious sight more confidence. And then nips him, eh? Jim, always trying to get away. Yes, yes. And when Ben Gunn's wanted, you know where to find him, Jim? No, where? Just where you found him today. And him that comes is to have a white thing in his hand. And he's to come alone, you understand, eh? Yes, I think so. You have something to propose when you wish to see the squire or the doctor here, is that it? And when, says you, why, from noon observation to about six bells. Good. Now may I go? You won't forget? No, no. Precious sight and reasons of his own, says you. Reasons of his own. That's the mainstay. Yes, yes. Now, please, please. And Jim, if you was to see Silver, you wouldn't go to sell Ben Gunn. While the horses wouldn't draw it from you. No, no, I swear it. Well, then, I reckon you can go. Let's him go, and Jim darts away. Gunn calls after him. Remember, precious sight and reasons of his own. <laughs> Turns to his own cave. Uh, if them pirates camp ashore, there'll be widows in the morning. <laughs> Curtain. Act Three, Scene Two. The Stockade. Upon three sides, wherever visible, high walls of rude planks, spike-shaped at top. At center and back, the front of a log house, with porch and door. Back of house, tall, large trees. At left, too, a wooden gate with wooden bar to fasten it. At several places about the walls, peak holes and gun rests. At center of stage, a sawed-off log which serves as a table, with other smaller logs which are used as seats. The floor is covered with sand. When curtain goes up, Gray, Hunter, Red Ruth, Joyce are stationed at different sides, each with gun to his shoulder, and each peering through a peak hole. On the table in the center stands Captain Smollett, an old-fashioned spyglass to his eye. Beside him stand Dr. Livesey and the squire. Before the curtain rises, there is heard the report of a cannon, fired at intervals. When the curtain rises, reports continue. Blaze away, blaze away. That's right. You've little enough powder left. Squire draws Dr. Livesey aside. We're beaten, Doctor. They have us here like rats in a trap. And Hawkins, the lad was like one of my own. They've got us. We've got to give in, Captain Smollett. We've come to an end. Captain drops glass, surprised. What's that? I am responsible for these men here. I can't see them murdered. I'm willing to do anything. Well, I'm not, and I don't think these men are either. What's that? My lads, you heard what the squire said. Now then, what do you say? Shall we give up, or stand here and fight like Englishmen? Fight, fight to the end, sir. sir. You see, I knew I could count on them. And now I tell you, we are not beaten yet. There's still a chance. For the last half hour I've looked at that ship, and only two have I seen aboard her. Well, 
as soon as it grows dark, one or two of us will creep down to the beach, row out, and cut that ship adrift. Yes, but how about the rest of that crew of pirates? Not a sound have we heard from them the last hour. That's what I mean to find out. I must know at once where the enemy is and what he is planning. In short, I need volunteers to reconnoiter. Gray and Hunter step up at once. We'll go, sir. Wait. Before you offer, I want you to know the risk. It's life or death. We're ready, sir. Keep to the left, and under cover as much as possible. Try for the woods. Right, sir. Captain to Joyce at Peak Hole. All clear, Joyce? Yes, sir. Off with you, then. Squire, standing in front of gate. If you men succeed, we'll owe you our lives. I'll remember it. Hunter and Gray exit. Careful now. I tell you, if we can do this, we'll turn a trick on them. Another cannon shot booms out. Captain, it seems to me it's our flag they're aiming at. Wouldn't it be wiser to take it in? Strike my colors. No, sir, not I. We shall have to do it sooner or later. We're outnumbered three to one, beaten in every way. I'm willing to give them that chart if they'll return young Hawkins to us and let us go. And I, Captain Smollett, I'd see the whole treasure in Davy Jones' locker rather than any harm should come to Jim. Several pistol shots ring out. There is a cry and a call. Hunter and Gray, sir. What? Squire, who has rushed up excitedly. Hunter's wounded. The gates. Quick! They open the gates. Exclamations ad lib. Hunter, supported by Gray, enters. Hunter is badly wounded. The doctor immediately rushes to him. Smollett speaks to Gray. Well? Well? They're all in the woods there, on every side. I got one of them, I think. In your places. To Dr. Livesey, who is bending over Hunter. Is he badly hurt, Dr. Livesey? Yes, very. Hunter, as he takes the water. Be I going, Doctor? Tom, my man, you're going home. I wish I had had a look at him first. Squire bends over Tom. Tom! Tom! Yes, sir? Say you forgive me, Tom, for bringing you along. Would, would that... Would that be respectful, sir? Aye, do, Tom. All right. Howsoever it be, so be it. Amen. Falls back. Here, Gray. Give me a hand. We'll carry him in. Gray and Dr. Livesey carry in Hunter. Then it's my fault. All my fault for bringing him. No time for that now, sir. Those men out there are planning an attack. That's it. Waiting to creep up in the dusk. All the better for us. If we win, yes. If not... Gray and Dr. Livesey return. To Dr. Livesey... Well? He's gone, sir. Poor lad. Poor lad. I. And how about the lad out there? With them? We'll know that very soon, or I miss my guess. Ahoy! Those blackguards out there will not catch us unprepared. We're ready for them when they come. Ahoy! What's that? Listen. Log house, ahoy! Log house, ahoy! They all rush to the peak holes and peer out. Silver, as I live. With a flag of truth. What do you suppose? Some trick. They know we've discovered their presence. Then turns to men. All stand ready and watch. The men take their places about the stockade and peer out through the peak holes. Gray, stand by those gates. Gray takes his place at the gates. Wait till I give the word. Ahoy! Loghouse ahoy! Who goes? Stand or we fire? Flag of truce! What do you want with your flag of truce? Captain Silver, come aboard to make terms. What? Easy. It's a trick, I tell you. You come alone? Alone. Dr. Low to Smollett as Gray opens the gates. Find out about Hawkins, if you can. Agree to anything. Make any terms so you can get the boy. Smollett turns as Silver enters. Silver, as gates close behind him. Flag of truce. You respect a flag of truce? If there's any treachery, Silver, it will be on your side, and the Lord help you. That's enough, Captain. A word from you's enough. Looks about. Ah, Squire, the top of the morning to you. Doctor, here's my service. If you have anything to say, better say it. Right you are, Captain Smollett. 
"'Well, then, we're willing to submit if we can come to terms and no bones about it.' "'What, you—' "'Wait. What terms?' "'That was a good lay of yours, sending us on that wild goose chase with that false chart. "'It was a clever trick to get us out of the way while you reached here. Only—' "'Well?' "'Won't work twice. I suspected you even then. That's why I took Hawkins. But now, here you are. And there's your ship with the Jolly Roger flying at her masthead. You lost most of your provisions coming here, and I know just about how much ammunition you got. That's our affair. And ours. With sudden fierceness. We got you, I tell you, and you've got to do what I say. We want that treasure, and we want it now. That's our point. Point enough. You want your lives, and that's your point. Now you give us that chart, and then either you come aboard along with us once the treasure shipped, and then I'll give you my Affy Davy upon my word of honor to clap you somewhere safe ashore. Sarcastically. Of course we can trust you to do that. Well, then, if that ain't to your fancy, some of my hands being rough, you can stay here and we'll divide stores with you, and I give you my Affy Davy as before, to speak the first ship we sight and send him here to pick you up. Now you'll own that's talking. Turns round to the men. I hope all hands will overhaul my words, for what is spoke to one is spoke to all. And is that all? Every last word by thunder. Refuse and you've seen the last of me but musket balls. Then hear me. If you'll come one by one... I'll engage to clap you all in irons. Oh. And take you home for trial. You will, will you? You can't find that treasure without us. You can't work that ship without us. Look out, I warn you. You need us more than we need you. Oh, we do, do we? You wouldn't stand there and defy me if we still had that boy. If Hawkins hadn't got away, I'd have you on your knees fast enough. Hawkins safe. Thank God. Now bundle out of this, double quick. I'll put a bullet in your back when next we meet. That's your last word? It is. All right, my men are waiting for me to give the word. You'll hear from me in the next five minutes. I'll stave your old blockhouse in like a rum punchin'. Smollett laughs derisively. Laugh by thunder laugh. Before a quarter of an hour's out, you'll laugh on that other side. Turns and looks at the men. And then the die will be the lucky ones. Stocks out. Gray closes the door behind him. Now, lads, I've given Silver a broadside, pitched it in red-hot, on purpose, and before many minutes are out, as he said, we'll be boarded. We're outnumbered, but we fight in shelter, and I believe we can drub em. That's why I put it on so thick, to make em fight. We can stand anything but what he threatened, a siege or being marooned. So let them come, lads, let them come. They all turn to get ready, most of them taking off their coats. Doctor, you take the rear there. As he goes to his position in the back. Aye, aye, sir. Joyce, the south side. Joyce takes his position. Mr. Trelawney, you and Gray will take the north. Joyce fires. What, what was that? Thought I saw something. Captain comes up and looks over Joyce's shoulder. Hit him? Don't know, sir. Wait, easy now. Peers out intently. There, in the trees to the right. Don't you see something moving? Yes. Wait. He's coming nearer. Get ready. Now wait till he gets to the open. Now then, ready, and... Suddenly stumbles back. Oh, my God. It's Jim. Doctor comes rushing up. What? Don't call out. See, to the left. They're watching. Now, ready, Joyce? Shoot to the left when I call. Ready? Ready. On the gate, doctor. The doctor goes to the gate and unbars it. Now then. Calls. Jim, come, come now, come, lad. To Joyce. Shoot, shoot, man. Joyce shoots. There is a rattle of musketry from the outside and then a slight pause. My God, did they get him, did they? Jim comes rushing in. The doctor grabs him in his arms. Thank God you're safe, lad. They almost got me, sir. Where have you been? How did you escape? I'll explain all that later, sir. There's something else you ought to know. I've met a man who's been here on this island three years. Ben Gunn, he says his name is. He seems to have something to propose. A man on the island? I see something moving, sir. Get back to your places. Doctor and Squire go to their places. Jim, you go into the house. Get under cover. No, sir. I'll stay here and help you, sir. I think I see them over here, too, sir. Aye, and here, too. In here, sir. Then it's from all sides. They're getting ready for a charge. Now hold steady. They're starting. Save your ammunition until they reach open. Have they come? Then let them have it. 
there are cries and shouts together with shots from the outside those within the stockade return the fire while jim and smollett are busy loading and relaying muskets i got one of them and i sir four of them on this side they're making for the wall shoot keep em away don't let em over at em lads the sounds have increased cries curses and musket shots are heard look out there you redruth over your head above another pirate's head there appears a pirate with a red kerchief over his head and a knife in his mouth over man's head. Man shoots and the pirate falls. That's it! Three pirates led by Anderson break over the wall. The fight now is a running one, both within and without the stockade. You, Squire, Gray, back in the house, lads, we'll fight them there. One pirate rushes at Red Ruth and stuns in fight. Another rushes at the doctor and forces him to flee. The fight is going very much with the pirates. It is now a running fight about the house, with cutlasses and pistols. For a time, it is heard rather than seen, for it is behind the house and within it. Then suddenly from one side of the house, there comes running, Anderson, cutlass in hand. Anderson, rushing forward. Oh, man, don't leave one of them, not a one. Suddenly, Jim comes rushing from the side opposite Anderson and runs full tilt into him and is caught. So, it's you, you young rascal. Well, here's where we settles with you. Oh, let me go. Let me go. Let you go. Aye, here is where you go a long, long ways, lad. He raises his cutlass. Jim shrieks. Then suddenly there is a pistol shot and Anderson falls. Gray comes running around the corner. I was just in time, lad. From the back of the house and inside, there come running the pirates pursued by the doctor, squire, and Smollett. The pirates make for the wall. After them! Don't let them get away! Don't let them escape! Suddenly, one of the pirates upon the top of the stockade turns and fires deliberately at Smollett, and Smollett stumbles back and finally falls. Captain, you're wounded. Now listen, quick! before they can reach the beach. Beat them to the Hispaniola and cut her adrift. The tide will carry her to the North Inlet. Once there, and you've got them, I tell you. You've got them. Go. Go. Quick. Save the ship. I'll go. No. No, Jim. The captain said to save the ship, and I'm going to do it. Curtain. Act 3, Scene 3. The Hispaniola tossing at sea. The ship is in motion, but evidently not under control. She is under her mainsail and two jibs. The sails droop at times and then fill with the report of a gun. The tiller spins round from side to side. The boat tosses and pitches as the sea runs high. Two men, Black Dog and Hands, are seen upon the deck of the ship, locked together in deadly wrestle, each with a hand upon the other's throat. Finally, they separate for a moment, and then knives flash. Black Dog, by a quick movement, wounds Hands in the leg. As he starts to follow up his advantage, Hands turns quickly, catches Black Dog by the neck, and holds him back against the rigging, his knife at his throat. Both are drunk. Hands, as he gets his wound, Oh, you, you would, you would, would you? Now then! The boat lurches. At the same instant, Hans makes a lunge and catches Black Dog. Now then, speak. You set the ship adrift. You did. Say it. Say it. Struggling. No, no. You'll never tell that to Silver. Now, for the last time, say it. Say it up. No. Then there. Stabs him. You'll never tell Silver. Shakes him again and again as he speaks. Oh. Throws him from him, tries to stumble over the deck, but is forced to catch the rigging of the mainsail. What's this? By thunder, he's got me! He got me! I can't see! What is it? Growing more and more terrified. I've gone blind! I've gone blind! Sinks back in the rigging, trying to hold himself up, apparently in a faint. For a moment there is silence while the boat tosses from side to side. Jim appears, climbing over the side of the boat. For a moment, he looks about, timidly and afraid. 
Then he calls. Ahoy! Shipmates! Ahoy! He waits for an answer. When he gets none, he scrambles down on deck and with pistols drawn goes carefully over the boat. Finally he sees O'Brien dead and hands apparently dead. He starts back. Oh! Dead? As he starts away there is a groan. Jim turns quickly. He is very frightened. With a cry he rushes out and on the companionway. He comes back almost at once. Gone! All gone! I've got the ship! I've got the ship! He turns to go to the tiller. If I can only sail her. As he hears a groan. Who's that? He waits for an answer. When he gets none, he stands fearfully waiting. Again a groan. Answer! Answer or I fire! Oh! It is well, Hans, lad. So it's you, Mr. Hans. My hurt? I'm dying, dying. I can't move. See that you don't, for at the first move I shoot. And where might you have come from? I have come to take possession of this ship. As Hans laughs. So, Mr. Hans, you'll regard me as captain until further notice. Wickedly. Captain, eh? Jim, presenting his pistols. Is it understood, Mr. Hans? Aye, it's understood. Then first we'll strike those colors. Pulls down the Jolly Roger. There, God save the king, and there's an end to Captain Silver, too. Throws flag overboard. Will you tell me how you might have come aboard? All night I've been below in a little boat. It was I who cut the ship adrift. You? And I killed him there for it. I'm going to— You've been drifting all night. I'm going to beach this ship at the North Inlet, where we can get off the provisions, and where Silver will never find her. All alone, eh? Yes, alone. If a sail a boat, mate. I'm going to sail this one, with your help, Mr. Hands. Oh, ho! With my help, is it? Just so, Mr. Hands. Now, I'll make a bargain with you, Hawkins. Captain Hawkins. Captain Hawkins. This leg's bleeding. I'll die, I will, if you don't give me a hand. Give me a kerchief to tie my wound up, and some food and drink, and I'll tell you how to sail her, and that's about square. You know where the North Inlet is? To be sure. You'll take her there? Aye. Mind, at the first sign of any treachery from you. I'm no such fool. Go below and get me some brandy. No. But you said? First the boat. Smart lad. Take no chances. Well, have it your way. Take a haul on the mainsail there. Jim goes to the mainsail and pulls at the ropes to make her fast. Hold it tight. There. As Jim works, Hans seems always to be growing stronger and wilier. She'll sail under the mainsail alone. Now put your helm hard, Lee. Hans becomes more and more active while Jim's eyes are upon steering. He surreptitiously tries and is able to move back and forth. It's a narrow channel. You'll have to feel your way. She's safe so far. You're doing fine, lad. Couldn't do better myself. And now, come here. Comes up. What do you want? A little drop of brandy. I've earned it now. All right, I'll get it. You sure the boat will be all right? Sure, old steady. All right. Jim enters cabin. Hands crawls to knife, hides it in his bosom, and returns to former position as Jim returns. I couldn't find any. Not a drop left. Jim, I'm for my long home, lad, this time, and no mistake. Come here. As Jim comes a step nearer, Hans places his hand in his jacket where he has concealed the knife. Jim, startled, draws his pistols. None of that. Take your hand out. Take it out. Or I'll... Hans, draw out his hand with stick of tobacco. Just get in my tobacco. See? Will you cut me a junk of that? I haven't a knife. Throw it here. Hans throws him the tobacco and he starts to cut it. If I were in your place, I'd be thinking of prayers and not tobacco. Why? Tell me that. Why? You've broken your trust. You've lived in sin and lies and blood, and you ask me why? For God's mercy, that's why, Mr. Hands. Jim gives him back the tobacco and goes to the tiller. I can see the beach from here. Hold that mainsail a notch. All right, lad. All right, sir. Hands now, knife in hand, has worked up back of Jim. Jim, holding the tiller, has not noticed him, but the moment that Hans throws himself forward with a cry, 
Jim suddenly sees him and throws himself aside to avoid the blow. As he does so, he lets go the tiller, which springs back and hits hands across the chest, stopping him. Before he could recover, I was safe out of the corner where he had trapped me, with all the deck to dodge about. Just forward of the mainmast I stopped, drew from my pocket my pistol, though he was once more coming directly toward me. Stop, stop, or I fire. You little rat! I've got a score to settle with you! Starts forward. Stop! As hands still comes forward. Stop! As hands still comes forward. Stop! Well then, take it. He pulls the trigger. The gun doesn't explode. Hands, with a cry of exultation. Aha! So the guns don't go off. Never thought to prime them, my fine captain. Now then, my brave lad, you're going to save the boat, are you? We'll see. We'll see. Meanwhile, Hans has been approaching, and Jim has been fleeing. Wounded as he was, it was wonderful how fast he was. I had no time to try my other pistol. One thing I saw, I must simply retreat before me, or he would speedily hold me boxed in the stern. I placed my hands on the mainmast and waited, every nerve stretched. Seeing I meant to dodge, he also paused, and a moment or two passed in feints on his part and correspondent movements on mine. It was such a game as I had often played at home about the rocks, and I thought I could hold my own at it against an elderly seaman with a wounded thigh. Well, while I stood thus, suddenly the Hispaniola struck, staggered, ground for an instant on the sand, and then swift as a blow canted over on the port side till the deck stood at an angle of about forty-five degrees. We were both capsized in a second, and both of us rolled about together into the scuppers, but I was first to foot again. The sudden canting of the ship made the deck no place for running, and I had to find some new way of escape. Quick as thought I sprung into the mizzen shrouds, rattled up hand over hand, and did not draw breath until I was safe on the cross trees. As they play a sort of grim hide-and-seek, he makes a movement and misses Jim. By thunder, if this leg were right, it would be quick work for you. But I'll get you. You'll not get out of this corner. I've got you now. I've got you. As hands almost corners Jim, the boat strikes and they are tumbled together. Jim scurries to the mainmast. Not yet, Mr. Hands, not yet. Scurries up the mainmast. If that boat hadn't struck, I'd have had you. And I've got you now. You can't get down. I've got you up a tree, mine fine captain. Jim draws other pistol. I still have another pistol, Mr. Hands. It is not like the other. This one is primed. Another step and I'll blow your brains out. Stops. Eh? Drop that knife, Mr. Hands. Drop that knife. Drop it, I say. Drop it? Very well, lad. Suddenly hurls the dagger. There, take it. With a cry, as the knife strikes him in the shoulder, turns away. Oh! Then, as Hands with shout makes toward him, he pulls the triggers on the pistols, and Hands, with a cry, pitches forward as Jim lets fall the pistols. With an effort, Jim, crying out under the pain, finally wrenches his shoulder free, and then tottering and almost faint, he cries, The stockade! Now for the stockade! Curtain End of Act Three Narrator, read by Tricia G. Act Four of Treasure Island, a play in four acts, by Jules Eckert Goodman. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One, The Stockade. When the curtain rises, it is early dawn. The pirates are in possession of the stockade, but there are only six of them left. These are asleep about the stockade. Silver leans against one of the posts of the porch, asleep, his parrot perched upon a stick just above him. Among the pirates are Mary, Morgan, Dirk, and Anderson. Several of them have their heads bandaged as if wounded. 
for a moment after the curtain goes up nothing happens then over the wall there comes jim in the half-light he stumbles around peering at the sleepers finally he comes up to silver and then he discovers that the pirates now occupy the stockade with a cry he stumbles back and starts away but just as he does so the parrot cries out pieces of eight pieces of eight immediately there is a stir and jim as he runs toward the gate bolts into mary who has awakened and is sitting up on the ground squire squire silver george mary catching jim who struggles no you don't no you don't let me be let me be silver silver they are all awake by this time and it is now light what is it look here here's a nice little catch well shiver my timbers if it ain't james hawkins i ain't looking brash as ever i'd like to come lad speak up as jim stands with his back against the wall and refuses to answer just dropped in for an early morning call still jim refuses to answer now i take that friendly well lad speak up speak up dr livesey and squire trelawney this here gets me it do but lad i'm going to know what you've been up to i'll not say a word until you tell me where my friends are what the little rat both he and morgan make a movement toward jim to morgan and mary who's captain here turning to jim i want you to recognize your position here you are with us who you'll admit ain't got no cause to be too friendly ay that's right so the truth lad the truth i have a right to know first what's what why you're here and where my friends are what's what ah uh, he'd be a lucky one as no bat to mary batten down your hatches to jim now come lad come not until you tell me you won't eh we'll see to morgan hold there tom morgan as morgan growls angrily jim's right it's only fairy knows turns to jim last night down came dr lizzie with a flag of truce silver says he let's bargain a pretty bargain it was angrily to mary it's the bargain i made him and me him and his friends to give up this place and us not to touch him and why because they had ammunition we needed because they had this place we needed because they can't get away why did they change then they thought they'd get out and make for the ship and leave us here and i let em think so sinisterly i've got the only boat to reach that ship and i've got it hidden i've beaten them fooled them at every turn oh have you i by gum i have well then look there the ship's gone well shiver my timbers there is great astonishment among the men for a moment they seem stunned then suddenly there is growing excitement marooned tricked beaten fooled with a sudden cry they make a dash toward jim wait as the men growl angrily silver speaks meaningly to jim jim at bay i'm not such a fool that i don't know what i have to look for the men shout at him ay ay and threaten well let the worst come it's little i care but there's a thing or two i have to tell you first you're in a bad way ships lost treasures lost men lost your whole business gone to wreck there is a growl from the men and do you want to know who did it why i did it morgan starts for jim you i'll slit his throat down silver thunders at mary and morgan i was in the apple barrel i heard you and morgan and hans all of you and told every word of it and as for the hispaniola it was i who cut her hawser it was i who killed the men you had aboard her you you i killed them i tell you and i brought that ship where you'll never see her more not one of you laughs on my side i've had the top of this business from the first and i no more fear you than i do a fly as the men threaten but are held back by silver kill me if you please or spare me but one thing i'll say if you spare me bygones are bygones and when you fellows are in court for piracy i'll save you all i can kill me and do yourselves no good or spare me and keep a witness to save you from the gallows the men with the exception of silver are in a little group whispering together silver stands and stares at jim his manner has changed he is no longer threatening but rather sly as if feeling his way so you cut the boat adrift yes and you know where it is eh but i'm not going to tell that boy's not going to live then by thunder here goes 
morgan with knife drawn springs toward jim right center but silver suddenly jumps in front of the boy and stands between him and the men avast there tom morgan maybe you think you're captain here by the powers i'll teach you better have i lived this many years and a son of a rum punching cock has had a thwart my house at the latter end of it well i'm ready take a cutlass in that dares and i'll see the color of his insides as the men all draw away in a group and whisper together i'm captain here by election and because i'm the best man by a long sea mile you won't fight then by thunder you'll obey i like that boy he's more man than any pair of rats of you here and let me see him that'll lay a hand on him during this part of the speech the men have come back with mary at their head well you seem to have something to say pipe up and let me hear it ax your pardon sir you're pretty free with some of the rules maybe you'll kindly keep your eye on the rest meaning by that this crew's dissatisfied this crew don't rally bullying a marlin spike this crew has rights and by your own rules we can talk together i ax your pardon sir acknowledging you as captain at this present but i claim my right and step inside for a council with an elaborate sea salute he marches into the log house one after another the rest followed his example each making a salute as he passed crew's right salutes and goes in according to rules salutes and goes in Foxel council salutes and goes in ay sir Foxel's council silver intensely and confidentially as soon as they're gone jim you're within half a plank of death jim draws back at the idea of torture what are they going to do first they're going to tip me the black spot same as billy bones ay takes jim by the arm but i'm going to stand by you lads through thick and thin what i'll confess i didn't mean to till you spoke up and told about that ship once i looked into the bay and see her gone well i'm tough but i gave out ship gone neck gone that's about the size of it intensely to jim sure you've got her hidden i'll not tell where and i'm not gonna ask but you're sure she's safe yes sure that being the case why did the doctor give me that draws out the chart surreptitiously what as jim looks startled i look at it is that the right one is it i don't know how you got this what torture you put them to to make them give it to you but you'll never get that treasure never eh i've got that ship and i've got her hidden and i am not going to tell you where she is no matter what you do never never you may get the treasure but we've got the ship mr silver and we won't give her up i lad a proper spirit but just now i'm thinking i'm your last card here and by the living thunder you're mine i'll save your life so be i can from them in there but tit for tat you save long john when the time comes i'll do what i can a bargain now understand i'm on the square side and i know you've got that ship hidden as jim starts to protest there lad i'm not asking what i know when a game's up i do and i know a lad that's staunch ah you that's young you and me might have done a power good together as the men reappear on the porch here they come stand up plucky and by thunder i still have a shot in my locker as the buccaneers hesitate to approach well step up i won't eat you which has it you mary comes timidly forward ay sir well hand it over lubber i know the rules i won't hurt a deputation mary hands silver a piece of paper silver glances at it and then hands it to jim jim do you know what that is the black spot right you was looks over jim's shoulder hello look here now where would you say that was cut from the bible sir see it reads without her dogs and murderers and very fitting too what fool's cut a bible you mary ay ay sir well no good'll come of it you'll swing for it, it ain't lucky ay ay sir no oh, ain't it this crew has tipped you the black spot in full council as in duty bound just you turn it over and see what's wrote there thank you george you always was brisk for business well what is it turns it over and reads d e p p o s e d depth posed and very prettily wrote i swear come you don't fool this crew no more you're over now thought you said you know the rules well well according to rules i'm still your captain till you out with your grievances and i reply all right then first and last you made a hash of this crew and now for some reason you're holding back that boy from us you've bungled the whole thing bungled is it you say bungled ay ay bungled ay by gum if you could see how bad it's bungled 
We are that near the gibbet my neck stiff with thinking on it. And do you know all that stands between us and to swing and sun dry? That boy, he may be our last chance. By thunder, you've neither senses by memory. I let the squire and his friends go. All right. And do you want to know why? Well, that's why. Takes out the map and throws it on the ground. I got what I wanted. I got the map. As the men pick up the map and look at it. I look at it. Mull it over, you rum punchins. Is that the real one this time or not? J.F. and a score below. With a close hitch in it. Flint's fist. Blood and bones, mate. It's the map. We've got the map. Long John. Long John Silver. So that's your true word. Captain Silver. Captain Silver. Captain Forever. Come, mates, picks and shovels. I the treasure. Flint's treasure chest. George Mary, as they get things. Wait. Well? When we do find this money, how are we to get it home in us no ship? By the powers, that's right. Arrow, appealing to Silver. Long John. Aye, then tell us that, Silver, tell us that. Aye, how, how? By the powers, but you ain't got the invention of a cockroach. You can't find a way to get that money home. Not you. It's Silver, Silver. Well, then I tell you, there's your map, and that's the way to Flint's treasure. Chest, picks, and shovels it is. And once we find it, then by thunder, if this lad doesn't lead us to that boat, I'll cut his heart out. That's, that's right. right. Kill, Kill him. him. Long John. Curtain. Act 4, Scene 2. The Spyglass Mountain. A heavily wooded mountainside, with trees and shrubs on all sides, and a thick undergrowth terminating in a large tree at center and up, the base which alone can be seen. In front of this tree there is a small plateau, grown up on every side with shrubs. At right, among the shrubs, and partly concealed by them, a skeleton, with hands over its head pointing to tree, and feet extended in opposite direction. When the curtain rises, the pirates, with the exception of Dick, are seen grouped around silver and studying the map. Dick sits upon a log, a little apart, his head in his hands as if sick. Read it out, barbecue. Silver reads from map. Tall tree, spyglass shoulder, bearing a point to the north of north northeast. Skeleton island, east southeast, and by east ten feet. This is spyglass shoulder. And plenty of big trees. Enough for all of us and more. He buried it well, Flint did, in a wicked spot. Dick starts up. Listen. What? That's the third time. Eh? Third time of what? It sounds like someone crying. It's a touch of the sun you've got, Dad. Turns to study his map. I tell you I heard it. Heard it clear. Reading from the map. Tall tree, spyglass shoulder, bearing a point to the north of north-northeast. Turns to the men. Well, lads, here we are. Scatter and look. Try every tree. Keep an eye for some sign. Scatter with you. The men spread about the mountain, looking at different trees, to Jim, who has seated himself. Come, lad. I'm tired, sir. Come. It's no time to be tired, lad. We're getting near to the treasure chest. Keep a sharp watch for whatever happens. Dick suddenly cries out. There. There. There it is again. Comes running up to Silver. Don't you hear it? Don't you? As Silver stares at him. It isn't the sun. I did hear it, I tell you. Silver, with meaning to Jim. Jim, did you hear anything? No, sir. Nonetheless, I did hear it. I know I did. As Silver turns away, suddenly Morgan, upon the hillside, gives a shout. There, you see? What is it, Tom? He and all the men rush to where stands Morgan, who is regarding a skeleton he has found. What is it? Look there. The men all look and then draw back. By the powers, a skeleton! I know I heard something. Now, who do you think that might be? Morgan bends over. He was a seaman, least ways is his good sea cloth. You wouldn't think to find a bishop here, I reckon. Silver, who has been studying the skeleton. Aye, but what sort of a way is that for bones to lie? Hands pointing one way, feet t'other. Like a blessed diver he is. Taint in nature. It ain't not a fact. Lads, I'm thinking if this could be one of Flint's jokes now. As the men question, Six came ashore when he buried the treasure. None came back. Could this fellow be one of them now? 
examines the skeleton long bones and hair's been yellow allard eyes ay that might be allard eyes you mind him mary ay that i do he owed me money he did and took my knife ashore with him well there's little enough about him now not a thing left not a copper doit nor a backy box that's queer flint weren't a man to pick a seaman's pocket by thunder that's right it don't look natural to me no by gum it don't not natural and not nice great guns messmates but if flint was living now this would be a hot spot for you and me six they were and six are we and bones is what they are now dick starts up there there it is again avast there dick flint's dead ay i saw him with these here deadlights billy bones took me in and there he lay with penny pieces in his eyes ay but if ever sparrow walked it would be flint's dear heart but he died hard Rage and hollered from rum and sang fifteen men it was main hot and the windy was open and i hear that old song coming out as clear as clear and the death hull on the man already come still that talk flint's dead and he won't walk he's wise who can say that as for this fellow here points to skeleton i've taken a notion in my old numb skull flint hauled him here and laid him down by compass what for for a pinter what there is general excitement among the men silver to morgan to whom he hands compass tom here's the compass just take a bearin along the lines of them bones i'm thinking maybe them the signs we're looking for mates well while the men wait eagerly east southeast and by east silver reads from map and the chart reads east southeast and by east it's one of flint's jokes and no mistake there's our way lads flint's treasure up with you men up with you the men with cries start up dick suddenly what what the men turn angrily you must hear it now you must from the distance and in a weird voice there is heard fifty men on a dead man's chest yo ho ho and a bottle of rum there is sudden consternation among the pirates as they stop stunned flint's voice i in his song i told you i heard it i told you he were an ugly devil were flint and that blew in the face blue that's the word that was how the rum took him silver suddenly recovering come come this won't do stand by to go about no no long john this is only someone skylarking someone that's flesh and blood it was flint's way of singing ay and his tones i'll swear to that i tell you it's flesh and blood and i'll prove it to you i'm going up there those of you who are not white-livered rats will come after me he starts up the mountain and the others begin timidly to follow stop oh stop now by the powers dick another word and i'll run you through listen in terror they all stop and there comes from the distance a wailing voice darby mcgraw darby mcgraw darby mcgraw listen to that ay fetch after rum darby mcgraw that fixes it they was his last words no one on this island ever heard of darby but us here it's flint mates i'm going back belay there i never feared flint alive and by the powers i'll face him dead belay there john don't you cross the spirit spirit well maybe while you were in punchin if you'd listen you'd have noticed the echo well well no man has ever seen a spirit with a shadow well then what's he doing with an echo to him eh and as for that voice it may be like flint's but it's a deal more like another's whose ben gunn's by the powers it is ben gunn ay ben gunn that's who it is but ben gunn ain't alive any more than flint sho nobody minds ben gunn dead or alive let's turn back silver ay back it is no by thunder no i'm here to get that stuff and i'll not be beat of man or double there's seven hundred thousand pounds up there and when did ever gentleman of fortune show his stern to that much and for a boozy old seaman and him dead so up with you here's our line for the pole star and the jolly dollars by this time he has reached the plateau the minute he sees it he draws back come on with you with a shout the men all go up and shout through following come on mate up lads up all together now morgan who has gone on ahead gives a shout and the men rush to him what it's here flint's treasure chest shouts all dig the living rovers that's right in with you and dig dig away not a thing not a coin 
And do you think you'd find it on the top? No dig, I tell you, dig. A two-guinea piece. Ah, uh, what did I say? Flint buried it deep. You'll find it. A board with walrus written on it. Flint ship, you're getting close to it now. Seven hundred thousand pounds. Think of that, lads. Fortunes for all of us. Seven hundred thousand pounds. All of Flint's treasure. All of... Stops and thunders loudly. By all the powers. What? Gone. I gone. Not a blessed thing more. Fold. Beaten. Tricked. Ay, lads, tricked, and it's that old cripple there as done it. That's why he's protected that boy. Stand by for trouble, lad. It's you and me again the five. Look at the face of him and you'll see it written there. He's sold us, mate, sold us. Kill, Kill him! Kill, Kill him. him! Gather forward. Stop. First one that puts a foot across that rim, I fire. Then by thunder, you'll have to fire. Here goes. Shooting of Mary and other pirate. My lads, we've got em. Silver draws cutlass. Pirates start. Shots off stage. Fall. Silver, as they start to approach, draws cutlass. Stand back or by the powers. We've got you, Long John. We're three to one. Now then, mates, from all sides. All together, now. Charge and shots are heard. Gun, Gray, and Doctor rush in. Jim. Safe, sir. I've got the lad safe. Ben Gun. I. I'm Ben Gun. I am. How do, Mister Silver? Pretty well, thank you, says you. And to think it's you who'd stun me, Ben Gun by Gum. Curtain. Act Four, Scene Three. Ben Gun's Cave. Jim discovered, and Ben Gun packing gold in bags. English and French, Spanish and Portuguese, Louis and Georges, doubloons and double guineas, moidores and sequins. Look, pictures of all the kings in those strange oriental pieces with wisps of string like spider's webs. Ay, lad, there it is. Flint's treasure, all of it. <laughs> Three years, day by day, it took Ben Gunn to fetch it here. What a fortune to be taking home. Oh, my, that's it, lad. Oh, you'll be taking me with you, lad. You'll not be leaving, Ben Gunn. The squire has given his word. Aye, that he has. That night you came here from my boat and sent me to him. Squire, says I, Jim Hawkins has sent me and tells me as how you're all in a clover hitch. Well, says I, let's bargain. Flint's treasure for a passage home. Done, says he. And you can rely on that, Ben Gunn. Ahoy, shipmates! Ahoy! What's that? Gunn rushes to entrance of cave. They're here, mates! And look, the ship! She's at anchor! They got us safe! Gunn stays outside watching ship until curtain. Enter Smollett, Squire, Dr. Livesey, Gray, Joyce, and Silver. Jim, my lad, we found the Hispaniola just where you left her. There she rides. And now, lads, it's home. Home and fortune for us all. Aye, aye, sir. John Silver, you are a prodigious villain and monstrous impostor. Yes, sir. But because you stood by this boy, I am told not to prosecute you. But dead men, sir, hang about your neck like millstones. Thank you kindly, sir. I dare you to thank me. Stand back. And now, men, to load, to load. Wait, Jim Hawkins. Yes, sir. Jim, there is not a man here but recognizes that if we have found this treasure and are taking it safe home, we owe it all to you. I am proud of you, lad. Gentlemen, I propose a salute to Jim Hawkins. Officer of the Crown. All saluting. Jim, Jim Hawkins. Hawkins! Curtain. End of Act Four. End of Treasure Island, a play in four acts by Jules Eckert Goodman.